Well, 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 welly, well, well. Yeah, um, this, 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 this is back. Thank Christ. Oh my God, thank fuck. Oh, that would have been bad. I had to download the game again because I got rid of it and, uh, it's been a minute since I did an actual Echo video. And if my... If my mind does not deceive me, the last... The last things I have to do in this is Leo and Carl. So... I'm gonna start off with the one I don't hate the most, which is Carl. I really don't like Leo. So, yeah, we're going to start with Carl. I just have to find where I was with it, because I don't even remember. Uh, back rooms vibes, huh? Okay, so, what day, what day, what day is this? So, I'm literally on Sunday then. Right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm on Sunday. Yep. Oh, oh boy. Sunday. Alright. So. Bring you guys up to speed. Um, last time we did Carl's Route, we got to the part where... Oh, that's that, right. You have to click this to get to the, um, to the days. And, yeah. Uh, I did all of Carl's route before, before moving on to Flynn's, but, like, I couldn't do all of it because, yeah. And you can see I've done all the other routes. Except for, except for Leo. But, uh... I did like over a four hour video of the end of Carl's route, I was gonna make it a big special type thing, but then everything failed with that, so now, you know, we're gonna have to jump straight back into Sunday. <sighs> and that means, um, not good things. So uh, let's, let's jump in. Oh boy, I know what that knife is. <laughs> and of course, I dream. I'm gonna have to get back in the mindset of Chase, oh my god. It's been so long. And of course, I dream. I'm running through endless hallways. All kinds of hallways, including one that looks like a space station. And another looks like a medieval castle. In each one, I'd run into locked doors. Because of this, I could only move through the halls, never knowing what's behind those doors. Eventually, I wake up, my dead limbs and heavy head tell me I'm not awake, not fully. I brace myself and shut my eyes again. My heart thumps and stomach churns with the disappointment of knowing I'm still in that fucking bedroom. The one that tells me I'm still stuck in a nightmare that's beyond the one I'm currently in. I feel things move about the room, hear things that sound like whining, crying, screaming, then I hear something in the ceiling moving above me. It has many legs like a spider that weighs hundreds of pounds, and then I'm free. Okay, so, um, if you don't remember, where we last left off with the car route was, we had ended up in this sort of back rooms like place and we were tr we were trying to get out we just rested the night in this bedroom because yeah i hold still as the gradual release of the paralysis seeps through my muscles and joints at this point i feel like i've mostly learned how to cope with nightmares that that thought would make me happy if it wasn't so if it wasn't so crushed but i'm still here in this actual nightmare Immediate, immediately anxiety rises back on my chest. I realize how fucked up this actually is, how much sense this doesn't actually make. 
as far as I can tell, we've been drugged somehow and moved to this underground hellhole as a kind of it's an experiment of some kind. Someone in Echo had, had to have done this. One of the crazy old people, maybe Duke. He probably built this underground maze just to watch us lose our minds, probably getting off to it at the same time. I grip the bed sheets and grip my teeth, grimacing at the ceilings I try not to cry. It had to be it. This isn't some kind of supernatural alternate dimension. This is real and someone's fucking with us. Probably been watched by cameras that are set up in corners and peepholes right now. That idea sends a shiver down my spine and I glance to my left, scanning the wall for any inconsistencies. We need to get out of here as soon as we can and the sooner we start moving the better. I hear a small whining grunt to my left at that moment and I look over only to find that Carl isn't in the bed next to me. Right, 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 this whole bullshit, right? <laughs> Funnily enough, this entire, this entire section of Carl's route ties back into the smoke room in a way that I can actually talk about more. But I yeah, for those of you who are just watching the Carl playlist, it's going to seem like it goes from, like, the one video into this one immediately, but but for people who have waited for this, it's been months. It's been so fucking long since I did Carl's route. Um, I mean, fuck, it's almost 2022 now. I stare for a moment at the tangled mess of sheets on his side of the bed, trailing off the side. Carl? Another grunt, then I hear Carl. At least I think it's Carl. His voice is deep, raspy, and it sounds like he's trying on some sort of weird axe that I haven't heard him use before. My name. Soiled. Slowly I sit up, and that's when I see something white sitting next to the bed. Yeah, um. When I first played Carl's Route, this fucking, this genuinely made me scared, like it sent chill down my spine. Jesus! I jump and slide back on my ass away from it, almost falling off the other side of the bed. Staring at it a few seconds longer allows me to make out the clear shape of horns under a bed sheet. Yeah, except those aren't Carl's horns. His horns aren't curved like this. Carl is sitting next to the bed with a white sheet over his head, swaying back and forth gently. What the fuck, Carl? I shout whisper to him, my earlier exclamation sounding way too loud in this quiet room. I look over at Ra Raven, right, he's still, he's a thing. But somehow he's still curled up on the sofa, fast asleep. Returning my attention to Carl, I jump again as I see that he's staring at me. Or would be staring at me if there wasn't a sheet in the way. Carl, what are you doing? That isn't fucking funny at all! I push myself off the bed, lean against it to take the weight off my swollen ankle. Now to twice as rich a sign, I stand in front of Carl. I reach out to take the sheet off his head, but I hesitate. The horns. They look bigger than they should be, and the voice is so different. Signing. Love. Carl? Carl, you're scaring the shit out of me! My voice is weak and cracks at the end as I lose my nerve. This place been getting to Carl more than he'd been laying on. Then maybe he was just sleepwalking. I remember doing that when we slept over at my house years ago. Reach out again, more slowly this time. But again, I hesitate. I can't shake the feeling that if I pull, off, pull it off, it won't be Carl. Suddenly, the horned head shakes back and forth violently, the grunting reaching a fever pitch. Shocked, I fall back in my rear yelp as my ankles jolted. I lean back in my hands, watching with wide eyes. The shaking is so wild, the sheet starts to slip off the head as it as if whatever's under the sheet is trying to shake it off. I brace myself, watching as the sheet slides slowly from the horns to reveal. Carl. Yeah, you see what I mean? These are not, these are his horns, not what we just saw. That'll be revealed as we go further in, I'm not going to spoil it yet. 
Of course, it's Carl. He stares back at me with really eyes like he's just woken up. I swallow hard. Carl? Carl, what are you doing? He silent for a moment and finally speaks. I know what to do. That's not his voice. Where are we supposed to be looking? Anywhere, but I know it's here. I lean uselessly against the dining room table again, watching them. I'm biting my lip, trying to lose my cool, trying to absorb everything Carla just told me. You said James Hendricks himself came to join you in your dream. Right? Carl husks, but doesn't look at me. Yep. And he told you that you had to find... something? Carl gets down on his hands and knees and looks under the stove. I know it sounds stupid, but that's what happened. I frown. You know, I had a dream about a giant spider crawling to the ceiling, but... But that doesn't make me I'm going to be searching around for a spider in the ceiling. No, this was different. I've never had a dream like that before. He stands back up and looks right at me. I felt like he was actually my brain telling me. I look back at him for a while, not wanting to tell him he's go going crazy just like I am. Well, it's kind of vain to just tell you you need to find something, isn't it? He told me other stuff. Carl was closer to me, starting to look through the various deck room of the dining room. Like what? Carl's is and looks inside. So this place is clad chaos. A leftover memory from the old house. That still doesn't really make any sense. And that he organized it for us into separate sections. To help us figure this out and clear his name so we can get out of here. How is clearing James Hendrick's name going to end this? I throw my hands on the air to gesture at everything that this is. Carl bends down to look under the dining room table and stands up right in front of me. What else do you have to go off on? Hey, I found something weird. We both look over at Raven who holds up, holds up a corkscrew. Carl turns back to me, ignoring the husky. If we find it, that locked door will open. He'll be able to get out. If he's here, why doesn't he just show, us, show up himself and do this for us? He said he's weak, but there, there are forces in this house that are more controlled than he does. He can only do so much. I gape at him. Do you hear yourself right now? Carl frowns and moves past me. What does his name even need to be cleared of? I'll feel tears starting to see my eyes again because now I think I'm the only one here who realizes how crazy this all is. Don't you guys get what's actually going on here? Raven stops rustling through the drawers and looks up at me. You okay, Chase? No, because someone fucking kidnapped us and put us in this crazy maze dungeon. We should probably need to figure out how we can get out. It's quiet for a moment as Raven and Carl exchange glances. And it's okay, Chase. We're gonna get out of here. I'm gonna head back in despair, about to cover up my face with my hands when something catches my eye. From the chandelier, a small white envelope is wedged between the glass ornaments. I squint to make sure it's not my watering eye as creating an illusion. Yes, there's definitely an envelope up there. Diamond patterns from the crystal cast across its surface. Guys? Carl ignores me as he continues to shove the things on the counter behind us. Carl, I found something. Points straight up at the chandelier above me. Carl stops, then finally moves next to me, looking up. Is that a letter? Looks like it. Do you think this is what you're looking for? Carl gets up on the table, wobbling slightly, as he reaches up to pull the envelope from the crystals. With a heavy thump, he drops back down to the floor. I'm still skeptical of everything right now as I get a closer look at the letter. I think I start to recognize it. That kind of looks like the same envelopes your mom collected. Carl picks up the envelope, turning it over. Kind of. Just says John on the front. John Begay. Oh boy. Carl opens the flap to empty out the contents. Isn't that the guy that- Whoa! The letter lights up and what sounds like a match being struck accompanies the flash. Carl gasps and drops the letter, shaking his hands. It's on fire! Shit, put it out! I stupidly wonder if the lights had somehow set the letter on fire as Carl starts trying to smother the, smother the letter with his sleeve. 
that moment, a great moaning sound shakes the walls, almost knocking me off my feet and sending plates crashing to the floor. I cling to the table as the plates fall from the counter and the chandelier swings above us. A deep groaning coalesces into a scream that could clap my hands over my ears. Carl staring at the ceiling as, as his eyes wide when he with his eyes wide as, he hear, as we hear another hissing sound. I jerk my head to look back in time to see a gust of inky black smoke burst from the stove, another scream accompanying it. Rushes straight towards us from what I, I see that only looks like a mouth and eyes in the smoke before it engulfs me. My senses are completely smothered. It feels like something slamming up against my chest and all my air is gone to be replaced by the unbreathable smoke. Its consistency is like water filling my ears and eyes. I scream into the emptiness, but I can't hear myself with a cacophony of sounds like rushing water, mixed with muffled screams and explosions. I fall to my knees and curl up on the ground into a ball, just praying that the savage thing killing me would stop. I was about to start to give in, something grabs the scruff of my neck hard and yanks me up so violently my teeth clack together. The fingers are unmistakably hooved. The letter, you fucking idiot! And I'm shoved forward and find myself laying flat against the dining room table. Completely blind, I feel around before finding the letter. I clumsily rip the envelope apart, grabbing the letter inside. Then, like a massive vacuum being turned on, the smoke is sucked out of the room along with the horrible screaming and roaring. In an instant, the room is quiet again, and I slump back to the floor, gasping for breath. Carl is right next to me, curled up in the same position that I was. Raven is whimpering, his face in his hands and his rear in the air. Carl coughs a few times, wheezing in the air before he looks at me and the envelope clutched to my hands. What the hell just happened? Are you okay? I can't respond. I lean back against one of the chairs tucked under the table for a moment, gathering my wits. Carl? Yeah? If that James guy tells you anything else, just tell me and we'll do it. Carl breathes heavily in response. Raven, you okay? Raven sits a few feet in front of us on his knees, tongue hanging out as he gasps. Good, good. You know, that's what I saw yesterday. Yeah, I gathered that. I give a short, humorless laugh. That and also, I'm done asking questions. I just want to get out of here. After a few minutes of catching our breaths, I turn my attention back to the letter. Somehow, it's completely undamaged despite catching on fire. It feels crisp and new, and the ink almost looks fresh. It definitely looks like it came from one of the bins in the crawl space. If that were the case, then there's no way it could be in the, in the great condition it's in. The letter itself is short, and I start to read it, read it aloud. My dearest John, the militia grows more agitated by the hour, and I fear that it will demand a search of this mansion. If, I, if that does indeed occur, I will do everything in my utmost power to hold them off. Look over at Carr, wonder if he just wanted to read the letter instead, but he's looking right at me. They will never find the room I've left you in, do not fear. Carl moves close to me, his hand reaching out to grab my shoulder. Uh, Carl? But if they so much as try to lay a finger on your head, it'll be the last thing they ever do. Before I can even move, Carl leans in and kisses me. I'm just able to get a glimpse of Raven's shocked face before I'm practically smothered by Carl's soft, warm nose and lips. I freeze, my shoulders tensing. It's not that I'm not enjoying it, it's just that the kiss was so unwarranted. I'm not sure how long it lasts, but I never make a move to stop it. Carl does finally pull back, it's awkward, and he's looking just as confused as I am. Raven sits there openly staring at us. Yeah, you see, guys, um... He's becoming more and more influenced by James Hendrix the first, so yeah. Because for some reason, that's a misconception that a lot of people have about, about this whole James Hendrix business. Because there's a James Hendrix in the smoke room as well. And they think that that's the same John James that is to being talked about here. No, 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 no. That, that... That James is, this James is grandson. That's James Hendrix III, and I, it's, it's ridiculous how dumb people can be. <laughs> Carl lowers his ears, his nose growing pink. Uh, sorry, I don't know why I just did that. I clear my 
my throat. Uh, don't worry about it. This place is doing weird things to me, too. Oh, that was cute. Raven, could you help me up? I mostly ask so we won't dwell on what just happened. Taro clears his throat. Well, I, uh... I think the door's open now. Let's go check. We make our way slowly down the hall, Raven just behind us. I lean in closer to Carl's ear so the husky can't hear. So, was that really you or did your great-great-whatever take control again? I... don't know. I think I was still in control, just felt like the right thing to do, you know? It looked like he already knew what the letter said. Yeah... Wait for him to go on, but he doesn't. Well, what does he need his name cleared for, anyway? Being gay? I don't think people care about that stuff anymore. No, we already sort of knew that. Besides, that was basically a love letter. So what is it that he thinks has ruined his legacy? Carl thinks. I guess the idea just allowed his lover to die. I think people believe that he sort of just left John to die, didn't really try to save him. Hmm... That is not what he needs to cleared from. He is a fucking piece of shit. This whole mess seems like a pretty roundabout way to go about that, in my opinion. But like I said earlier, I'm done asking questions. Well, it was kind of nice. The kiss, I mean. Carl looks back with one green eye. Yeah? I smile a little. I guess the fact that something had been growing between us since the beginning of the week is pretty undeniable. And now we're here in this crazy ultra dimension with smoke monsters. So... Well, fuck it, I guess. I lean forward and kiss his big soft cheek. Yeah. Carl grins about to say something when I catch moving out of the corner of my eye. Immediately afterward, I hear a dull thud and Carl grunts, his eyes bulging before he crumples, sending me to the floor with him. Oh my god! I yelp as my ankle bangs against the floor and I roll onto my back, teeth grit strained to reach down to hold my foot. Whatever just hit us is standing over me now. I raise a hand to feebly hold off the next blow. When it doesn't come, I lower it slowly and look up. Jenna? Jenna stands there stoically, holding, holding what looks like a small wooden stool. Sh Jenna, what did- I, what, How did you get here? So he sits the stool down, so he seeming to recognize me. I lean forward to feel my ankle, the pain raining from my hot pulses. Chase, are you okay? What happened to your leg? I... sprained it. Hey, Jen, it's been a while. I look over at Carl, still curled up in his side, his arms wrapped around himself. Carl, are you okay? Then to Jenna. Did you hit him? Then it walks past Carl and crouches down next to my leg. This looks really bad. Yeah, Carl, are you okay? <sighs> Carl grunts and turns over to face his hand to his chest. Jenna, what the fuck was that? Then it looks at my ankle a while I'm before stand up and looking around. It doesn't look like she's going to answer. Carl sits up. How did you find us here? Raven perks up. Yeah, is there a way out? Jenna finally looks down at Carl, and I note the complete lack of concern in her eyes. I came to your house looking for TJ and ended up going to the basement. She looks down the hall again. And I ended up here somehow. I blacked out before I did, so I don't know how to get out. Carl finally stands up, wearily eyeing the stool held loosely in Jenna's hand before bending down to help me back up. Your leg okay? He grunts in my ear as he slides it my arm over his shoulder, and slowly pulled me back out onto his back. Mostly, I think I kind of twisted it up again. Carl grunts again and turns back to Jenna now with me on his back. Well, that's pretty fucked up just by only swinging someone around a corner. No, what's fucked up is waking up in a place you have no memory of going to. And his sharp muzzle points right at Carl, glaring. Carl stutters for a moment, coming out expecting to have Jenna snap back at him. Hey, this isn't my fault. We have no idea where we're at either. Why are you guys fighting? Raven looks innocently between the two of them, his ears perked. You want to know why? Because Jen's a fucking bitch who doesn't understand social anxiety. That's fucking why. It's a good question. I watch Jenna closely from over Carl's shoulder. She just glares at Carl, arms folded. 
she blame him for this somehow? After a few seconds of awkward silence, Carl speaks up. Well, you hit me for one. I don't know why you are so mad at me. Jenna looks back at Carl and I see the tenses in her shoulders slowly loosen. I'm sorry, I'm just a little uptight after waking up here. You're doing better than us. She's just freaking out for hours. I give Raven a side glance. Well, things have been, cra been going crazy since you left the lake. Like us, ended up in this fucking nightmare dimension? Not just that. Jenna sets the stool down on the carpet before sticking out her forearm. So I see the crushed, crusted blood in her fur. In the form of three long lines. What the? TJ attacked me. What? That sense doesn't seem to fit together. TJ attacked? Why? I have no idea. The faraway vacant look Jenna had in her eyes earlier is faint to be placed by more concerned expression I better know her for. He's been losing ever since Flynn tried to grab him at the lake. I start to feel a little sick to my stomach. Why? He wouldn't tell me, he was just acting anxious, he kept looking over his shoulder. But isn't he sort of like that most of the time? Then folds her arms and shakes her head. No, he kept looking around, saying he was seeing things. She stopped short. Like what? Jenna looks up. Sydney. We're quiet for a while. It seems all the rumors at this town are true, everyone is crazy. This isn't normal at all, leaving an echo. Jenna looks at Raven. I I'm sorry, who are you? Raven grins. No, I'm sorry, I'm Raven. Six out of hand. Jenna looks at before turning to me. Chase, something was going on with Leo too. He kept asking around for you, then ran off saying he had to take care of some things. Oh, I don't know why. I think of what Leo might have wanted from me, but I draw a blank. It could be anything. Anyway, I've been trying to find TJ for ages. I don't even know what day it is anymore. I tried Carl's house since I'd ran out of any other options. Then I goes quiet, then reaches into her pocket and pulls out her phone, holding up, clearly looking for a signal. Just like got to your house, Carl, I heard popping sounds. Jenna sighs and puts her phone away again. Gunshots, I'm pretty sure, coming from Main Street. Something's been happening to everyone. Jenna slides her hands into her back pockets, looking around. And now this. Wow. So something fucked up is happening all over town. I think about Leo and TJ, my stomach twists at the thought of them being out there. I can only hope that they were able to get out somehow. At this point, I'm just waiting to wake up. We all are. Yeah, especially after dying smoke monster she's around the dining room. What? And it looks at me and Carl. Carl glances back at me as if asking for the one to explain the impossibility that just happened. I take a breath, trying to think of how I'm going to say this. So, I think at this point you're going to have to just go with whatever this place throws at you, Jenna. Yeah, we've been all. We've all just kind of accept what's been happening. Well, we have to, otherwise it'd just be us sitting around freaking out about how crazy this all is and not doing anything about it. And so far, it seems we're at least moving things forward. And stares at us. What happened? We all stand in front of the wooden door in a half circle, none of us wanting to open it. So, this is all to clear James's name? Seems that way. But why go through all this trouble? I rest my good foot on the carpeted floor while I lean on Carl's back, wanting to give him some relief from carrying me all the time. Probably because of the smoke monster thing that's trying to stop him. Maybe it's making all these obstacles? Hmm. Then I had taken our whole description of what had happened in the dining room pretty well. She listened silently when I explained what had happened so far. So I guess we can get his story straight and maybe get it out to the town of what really happened. We might be able to get out of here. Jenna eyes the door. You think that there's maybe a reason why this monster doesn't want James to get this information out? We're quiet for a moment. Well, we don't have much else to go on. Again, there's a long pause we tr as we all contemplate with the helmet behind the door. That pause is broken by a certain husky, though, as his white hand suddenly reaches out to grasp the handle. Me, we already done what needs to be done. I'll bet this gets us home. Raven! 
heavy, the heavy door pulls open slower than earthy squeal. For the brief moment that I'm conscious, I see a black square in front of me that goes in size until, until it takes up my entire vision. The muscle of my back and neck seize up, my teeth crunch together, my head jerks back, and then I'm falling. Okay, so uh, now we're going into the next setting of this fucking nightmare. There's a rhythmic throbbing in my head, but it's hard to decide if it's going from inside my head or outside. The next sense to come back to me is touch. I feel a cold, hard surface under my back, probably a wood, and my claws sink into it. I shift around a little, but I don't feel like getting up just yet. The smell is musty and old. I read it on my great grandpa's wood. <laughs> I read that wrong. I read it on my grandpa's woodshed, a place I'd often go when I played hide and seek. The drumming sound continues, and the rhythm makes me think it's definitely coming from outside my body. It sounds. Tribal, in a way. The Meseta. The Meseta. Where am I? On the edge of my memory are troubling images of endless halls and rooms. The smell of decaying and noose. But I feel like if I block it out and just go back to sleep, I can erase all of it. I almost succeed, but then something brings me right out of my reverie. Carl! Chase! I grimace. The voice reminds me of something dark. Cloudy. Help! A much louder yelp that follows as we roll into my side, cracking my eyes open blearily. Yep, the new setting. The new fucking setting. And, uh... <sighs> this connection to the smoke room in more ways than one, I would say. <laughs> I'm in a dark room. Very dark. The only source of light coming from what looks like a candle on a bedside table. A large bed sits next to it. I'm laying near the foot of this bed, and opposite me I can barely make out a wall, next to which is a wooden box. Help! Raven's plain, plaintive moan forces me to my feet, my joints cracking uncomfortably. I stir my right foot up to stand under me, a blinding pain flushes on my leg, sending bright white across my vision. I let out a muffled scream of pain behind my clenched teeth, closing my eyes as I wait for it to subside. Memories are starting to flow back to me. There's a doorway in front of me, and I start to make my way towards it, hopping slowly on, one, on my left foot, holding the right off the ground. I come into a small hallway, one that branches to my left into a corridor of darkness. Right in front of me, however, is a set of stairs. Light glows at the bottom, I'm pretty sure that's where Raven's voice is coming from. In fact, I'm pretty sure I can hear other voices coming from there as well. I look down at my ankle, wincing as I see it's gotten even bigger, more than twice its original size. Starting to think that it's more than a sprain. As I make my way down the stairs, cringing with every light hop, my stomach starts to sink. Remember now the weird mansion that we were just in, the doors and hallways and the smoke monster? And now the door we just went through. Whatever's happening to us isn't over yet. Oh, fuck. Yeah, uh, if you played the smoke room, this image should remind you of something. When I reach the bottom of the stairs, I find Jen and Carl standing around a tall, brown wardrobe. I stand there, breathing heavily. Carl turns to see me. Chase! He immediately rushes to my side, his hooves clopping loudly against the wooden floor. I think he's simply coming over to support me, but he wraps me up in a hug. God, I keep worrying that one of us is going to disappear. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, I'm fine. I was upstairs in the bedroom, I think. The anxiety and feeling over the whole situation goes away just a little, absorbed in a little into the soft warmth of Carl's body. Over Carl's shoulder, I can see Jenna watching us, her eyes narrowed, her expression dark. I about to ask her what's wrong when I hear a loud bang from inside the wardrobe. Guys, you're still there. I think something touched me. Then it turns back to the wardrobe sound for a moment and bends down to look at something. Guys? I hear a metallic click, then Jenna jumps back to the doors swing open and a black and white blur falls out like a rock. Raven face plants neatly on into the wooden floor. He stays there a moment, moaning to the planks before Jenna bends over to help him up. Are you all right? Yeah, I, I just... I just felt like something grabbed me. Back into the wardrobe to find a very bare and empty wooden compartment. I'm inclined to believe him, though, after everything that's happened. Where are we? It's a good question. Now with the excitement over, I take the opportunity to look around as well. Everything is wooden. The walls, floors, ceiling. 
And there's a large rug on the floor covered in colorful patterns and shapes. Reminds me of the art projects we do in elementary school when learning about the natives. There's a big stone fireplace and two rug-covered chairs in front of it. Jenna gingerly shuts the wardrobe. So, a log cabin. Does everyone remember where we were before? Yeah, that mansion place. So we're still stuck in this dimension thing. I saw my face with one hand while I leaned against Carl with the other. I'd long ago given up on trying to figure out exactly what the hell is going on. Like Carl said earlier, we just have to keep moving and hope we get out of here. What's that sound? The drumming that I thought was coming from my head when it started up again. Drums? The husky moves towards the wall, which consists of several logs stacked horizontally on top of each other. I can't see anything. The cracks are filled with stuff. I look around again, this time more carefully. Right in front of me is a large log door, not like the one we initially came through. On my left side, separated by the stairs, is what looks like the kitchen side of the room. In it, there's a small table with two chairs on either side. There's also a big black wood burning stove next to a few shelves, which are full of pots and pans. Various tools and furniture clutter up the rooms. And there's a window. I point it out to Carl. Look, let's try and see out through there. Carl pulls me into the familiar position on his back before clopping over to the window. The sound's a bit louder with my added weight. Jenna and Raven follow behind. Oh yeah, the... Mm. This should really remind you of something if you played the smoke room. And if even if you've not, just... God. There's a, net, there's a ledge next to the window, thankfully, and Carl lets me sit on it. I turn to look out the window while the others crowd around me, resting their hands on the wooden bench. The first thing I notice is a flickering light in the distance about a hundred yards away. It costs, it casts out across the ground around it. Shadows from rocks and bushes dance about in the moon of the illumination. It's definitely a fire, a large one. Probably a bonfire. Yeah, the Meseta. And you know, it's especially fucking creepy, considering that bonfires are what they use to mark, like, their territory. And the fact that they don't put one anywhere near Echo, it's like this giant circle around the town. It, it, that's fucking, it just, mmm. The blackness around the fire is unnatural, though, just like what I saw through the windows in the mansion. It's inky and thick, and as the oppressive air almost being alive. No delight comes when I presume to be the sky, that fire being the only signal that anything exists outside the cabin. Fire, Raven says redundantly. The drumming's coming from it. Carl reaches out, but his hand looks to immediately press against something. I reach out to him and feel a solid flat surface where a pane of glass will be set up, but it's clear there's nothing visible there. Observe. Accept. Move on. Hey, look. I look up in time to see there something dark flash across the fire. It disappears into the darkness to the right of the flame, though. What was that? It was a, a tumbleweed or something. No, it was jumping, whatever it was. I feel a prickle on my neck, and now I'm not really into the idea of just staring out into the darkness. But then it happens again, and I see what Jen is saying. The dark shape starts at the left side of the fire before passing in front of it. I get a brief impression of a tail and ears, legs, and arms pumping as if jogging in place. It moves past the flames and disappears into the darkness again. Something's out there. We continue to watch, but the drum beat dies down. After a minute, it's clear nothing's moving around out there anymore. What was that? Well, what? Gora glances at Jenna. The drumbeat sounds kind of native, don't you think? He's really waiting for Jenna to confirm. Maybe. There's an awkward sound before Carl coughs. Well, let's think. We weren't able to get out of the mansion until we found the letter, right? He looks at me. Yeah. I respond automatically. Well, if that's the case, then maybe we have to find something in here, right? I guess it would make sense, but what are we supposed to find another letter? Yeah, didn't didn't someone tell you about finding something that would open the door? Yeah, and I think it makes sense that whoever set this up would do it the same way, right? I sigh and stop staring at the window, my back sore from the twisting motion. 
sit straight up on the bench and look back into the cabin. Well, if we're supposed to find another letter, there's a bunch of places to hide it. Maybe we should try the door first? Jenna walks over to the door and looks it up and down before reaching out to slide back a rusty bolt. To my surprise, it moves with only a little resistance. Uh, are we sure we want to go out there? I mean, I don't know who that is running around. Jenna hesitates and he's back at the door but doesn't budge, not even an inch. Jenna sighs. Riven bounds up next to Jenna for enthusiastically yanking back on the handle as well. Again, the door holds fast. Of course! Jenna stares at the door a moment before turning to us. Let's take a look around upstairs. If we're supposed to find something, then we should start from top to bottom. Agreed. Carl bends down to me up with the rest of Paul on his shoulder. Okay, real quick. Real quick before we move on. Um, just the description of the thing outside in the outside of the house and like jumping around the fire. That is so fucking effective. I fucking love that shit. Like, it's so reminiscent of, like, <laughs> it's that uncanny thing where you, like, are sure you saw something, but you can't be sure what it was, and that just makes it so much worse. I fucking love shit like that, Nora, man. <sighs> Wait, I don't want you to have to drive me everywhere, little up and down the stairs. He stops mid-stoop, his face little with mine as he looks at me. You sure? I don't really want to leave you alone down here. So look back and I can't help but note the differences that I noticed earlier. His face has harder lines, his fur duller, eyes somehow deeper, wiser. You all right? I break out of my trance and blink. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll just stay down here and look around where I can. Jen and Raven already making their way up the stairs. Raven going out of his family used to have their own log cabin. All right, but uh. Shout if you need anything. I smile. At least I feel some parts of Carl is still familiar. After the ram heads up the stairs, I lean back on my little bench, let in my head, tilt back as I close my eyes. Even in this new environment, everything is still feeling surreal. I've come to welcome the feeling, though. It's a, it's a nice little berry, everything that's happening right now. In some ways, I can still pretend that this is a dream. Hell, even now I'm thinking it's a dream, that I'm somehow stuck with my paralysis. Maybe I'm in a hospital right now and they're trying to figure out how to pull me out of it. That thought doesn't feel like I'm being washed and the fur prickles around my neck. I guess it would be kind of awkward if all those doctors are watching me right now. It'd be Carl and Jenner there too. And Leo and Flynn and TJ. Okay, dude, you know, when you... St I fucking love this shit, you know? Like, it's dream logic. When you start thinking about something, it starts happening. Like, the way dreams work. Like, for example, here's, here's a dream. Here, here's a dream, for example. Um, you're on a train, and there's an old man across from you, and somehow, you don't know why, but your brain just screams that you should be scared of this old man. And because your brain tells you that, and because you actually start feeling scared of him, it becomes night. And because it becomes, it comes night, the old man gets scarier. And because you start focusing on him and, like, how old he is, you end up in a nursing home. And because of that, you start, you, you start, like, doing things for him because, you know, he's an old man. You try and care for him. And then, because you, you keep failing, he gets angry and more monstrous because you start thinking he's more monstrous. He turns into a monster. And because he's a monster, you end up, like, in a child, child at home or something. He's chasing you. Dreams work like that, where... You think about one thing, and then that thing happens. And it's so fucking creepy and scary when you use it, when you use it in horror fiction like this. Because it's, it, it's able to get under your skin in a way that, like, it wouldn't normally if you're just, like, trying to scare someone with, like, creepy descriptions of things and, like, jump scares and all that. Like, it's so much more effective when you try and plunge into the... Into the person you're trying to scare is subconscious. It's much easier to scare them that way. The feeling gets stronger as so I turn back around to look out the window. It's still silent and the lonely little flame in the distance continues to flicker around the rocks and sagebrush. It makes me wonder how endless this world is. If we're in some type of ghost dimension being, being manipulated by what are basically ghost gods and will this whole ordeal be never-ending? The thought twists my stomach, so I stop thinking about it. 
I turn back around at Fort Myers and start scanning the kitchen from top to bottom, looking for something, anything that might stand out. I assume I'm looking for a letter, but again, if the rules are limitless in this world, then there's no tell what it might be that we're supposed to find next. I think about vocally asking James whoever the hell it is for help. Maybe some kind of hint at least, but there's no way I'm going to do that with others, without the others with me. I'm thinking about pushing off the bench and start limping around the kitchen, when a small scratching sound catches my attention. I hold still, then lean back, tilting my ear towards the sound. It's muffled and a bit distant, but it's coming directly to my, directly to my left. Is it happening on the outside of the cabin? My fur prickles and I think about calling Carl. I can hear the three of them stomping around, talking to each other in muffled voice from the stairs. I turn around again, this time a little more tentatively. The dancing bonfire continues to glow quietly, no other movement aside from the shadows. This time a rustling sound comes from that same spot, and I instinctively turn my eyes in its direction. Carl! I raise my voice only a little bit, but their conversation carries on upstairs if I hadn't said anything. I look up at the ceiling, then back out the window. The rustling sound continues, this time in earnest, as if something's twisting around in the brush. It's coming from just out of view of the window, right at the base of the house. I hold my breath and lean forward, stretching my neck up to get a better angle and peer down into the darkness. It's really too dark to see much, or at least that's what I was thinking. Almost as if it has its own glow, a bright white face stares back at me from the darkness. My mind blanks, my body seizes up. And just like that, I'm in a paralysis, forced to stare down at the white face, the black eyes. It's as if the thing is holding with its gaze, but it's, as it does, its features become more definable. I see tall ears, a long pointy muzzle, a band of some type, across the thing's forehead. Stop. It. Something says, in very de says it very deliberately through their teeth right in my ear. At the same time, the face flickers and fuzzes, like a TV picked with bad reception. The head twitches and shifts, then the muzzle opens and... <laughs> the cackle that comes forth is all at once terrifying and familiar, and at that moment I'm released. My vocal cords start working at the same time, and a little scream as I fall backwards. I land on the wooden floor with a loud thud that shakes the pots and pans on the shelves. The room spins and feel like I'm coming right out of a dream, like I've been sleeping for ages. Fucking hell, them showing up. God. Them fucking showing up. The sprites appearing on screen made me jump a bit. Fucking hell. That was such effective writing. I fucking love this VN. The next thing I know, I'm surrounded by the three faces of my friends all looking down at me. Carl grabs me under the arms and pulls me into a sitting position, his face worried. But there's something else, too. Anger? What happened? I'm startled by his abruptness and I stammer through an answer. It was a face out the window. What did it say? Carl, what are you doing? Raven approaches the ram gently, his ears falling. Carl glances at the husky, then a genuine been silent so far, then back at me, slowly letting go. Sorry, I was just worried about you. What did you see? Did it say anything? Takes me a to find my voice. Um, no. No, it didn't say anything. Just laughed. What did it look like? A fox, maybe, had a band over his head. Carl's eyes narrow. Hey, I found something. We all look up at Raven as he holds up a white piece of paper. What is that? Carl stands up, staring hard at the paper in Raven's hand. I don't know, it looks like a photocopy of a newspaper? Let's see. Raven turns towards the candle sitting on the desk. Jenna stands behind him. Meseta boy missing after. Whoa! Raven flinches back as the paper catches fire, illuminating the entire cabin room. Our shadows dance across the log walls. The paper, which Raven had dropped, flutters to the floor, a tongue of angry flame eating up completely before it's the floor. We all stare at the smoldering flake of ash on the ground. Raven, are you kidding me? I, I wasn't even that close to the candle. That might have been what we needed. But I... Raven stares at his hands, looking for only between them and the candle, which seems to flicker innocently on the table. I rest my face in my hands. Well, what do we do now? He wasn't near the candle. I had out of my hands, not because of what Jenna said, because of the way she said it. 
Huh? I've got a side angle here. You were at least two feet away. There's a brief silence. Shanna, what are you talking about? I don't know, Carl. What am I talking about? Jenna turns with ram eyes narrow, teeth just slightly bared. I look at Carl. He's frowning, a concerned look in his face. Shanna, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm saying there's no way that candle burned that paper. Carl's concerned expression deepens, but there's also a hint of condescension there. What else could have done it, Jenna? This time sounds as heavy. I'm baffled by the interactions they've been having so far, and judging by the look on Raven's face, so is he. Hey guys, I'm sorry I burned it. Maybe we can figure something out from the title. Uh, Meseda Boy Missing? I look at Jenna. Oh yeah, Meseda, isn't that your... your tribe, or... Yep. If my face flushes, I wonder if I'm being insensitive, like I think... I think she knows everyone from the tribe. But what does that mean? A lot of people go missing out here. Well, it has something to do with James, right? How do we know that? I look at Carl. Are you okay, man? You've been acting really weird ever since we got here. I think we're all acting a little different after getting here, don't you think? Chloe glances at Jenna. Are we fighting again? Staring at the ash on the ground, something I should have realized earlier suddenly hits me. Wait a minute, that newspaper. It kind of looked that's kind of looks like something that came out of the cross space tubs. What do you mean? I was looking through some artifacts that Carl's family saved from back that way back when, for that project I was doing. Seemed like years ago at this point. I set my fingers, and some of the stuff was missing from it, like pages ripped out out from Carl's mom's notes that had photo that had photocopies of old newspapers. So, so that was just a clipping from the notes. Maybe, I don't know, but John was native, so maybe it has to do with him? I think back to the small fox I saw through the window, the band across his forehead. Is that John? So the ghost just ripped out the pages to show you in this nightmare world? Why didn't he just point them out to you in the real world? I don't really have an answer for that. Then why would we be- Then we wouldn't have to go into this shit right now. Ghost walls? Raven shrugs. And what if that was our key out of here? Well, they can't just leave us here, right? We don't know anything about where we are, what these things are capable of. So what now? Just sit around and wait for something else to happen? Carl suddenly sighs. Well, I'm gonna look around some more. You guys do whatever you want. Again, I'm taking by Carl's demeanor. I've never seen him act like this before. It's like he's a different person. Without another word, he turns in his hoof and walks away. Over the next several hours, we search the cavern from top to bottom. I hobble around the ground floor, careful not to look out the window, even when the trumping starts up again at a few points. I check all of the shelves, under the chairs and tables, in the stove, in the pantry, between the cracks in the floor and walls. We don't find anything. At some point, I almost topple over from dozing off, and that's when we call off the search. There's some discussion on where we should sleep, if we should do it in shifts. Jenna suggests you stay up downstairs while the rest of us sleep, just in case something else happens. Carl suggests that I sleep in the bed upstairs because of my leg, and I have to agree with him. Raven stays downstairs with Jenna, making himself comfortable in one of the chairs. As Carl hobbles up the stairs with me on his back, Jenna watches us the whole way. I sit on the bed, watching as Carl moves about the room, looking behind shelves under the bed. Carl, I hate Haskin, but are you okay? Hmm? He looks back at me. Yeah, I'm fine. I just want to make sure everything is safe for you. Thanks. It's just... It's just that you seem different, I guess. Carl looks at the ceiling, seemingly thinking. It's difficult to make out, make him out in the darkness. Just like when he had a sheet over his head, I get the weird feeling that, I, that who I'm looking at might not be Carl. I think it's just that this has made me grow up. I realize now how useless I've been. This is sort of an opportunity for me to actually do something, help people, you know? Yeah, sounds nice, but I can't get out, but I can't get rid of that nagging feeling that something is off. It's in the way he talks, the way he moves, right down to his facial expressions. I sit my legs gingerly under the bed and lay back. Carl comes over to sit on the other side. Gonna sleep here too? Yeah, you need me to get around, so I'm gonna be on your side as much, by your side as much as possible. 
Right, thanks. We lie awkwardly on our backs for a moment. Carl suddenly turns on his side and pulls me into his chest. I'm surprised and I turn instinctively, so that he's spooning me. I guess it makes sense after our semi-confession back in the mansion. He knows my neck, and it, but again, the action is weirdly unnatural. Even with his big, warm body next to mine, it takes me a long time to fall, to, fall asleep. Yeah, he's, uh, he's not himself. Let's just say that. I open my eyes and blearily I can make out the dark cab in the room. My heart sinks again at realizing where I am, but it's more subdued this time. Guess I'm getting used to my new life. My mouth is dry, very dry, and I feel like I need to find water. I'm not going back to sleep. I sit up. Carl's moved back to his side of the bed at this point, lying out on his back, snoring. Quietly, I get out of the bed, wincing how creaky the floorboards are. I am way down the stairs, eyes adjusted to the point where I can barely make out the ledges. When I reach the ground level, I see the raven is splayed out on the carpet, snoring as well. I shake my head before moving to the kitchen. Jenna isn't there, and I wonder where she might be at. Was she in that other room upstairs? Maybe I just missed her when I was distracted by Raven. Looking around, I see a small cup sitting on the table. I'm almost positive it hasn't been, it hasn't been there before. Maybe Raven or Jenna sat it there. Walking over to it, I'm relieved to see that it's filled with what looks like water. I pick it up and sniff at it, not really getting a hint of anything. Tentatively, I take a sip. And immediately spit it out. It's salty, putrid, it tastes like... I jump and some of the liquid splashes to the floor. Gingerly, I sit, I sit down in the cup, walking into the opposite room. Everything is still in, the other, still in the other room. I can't even hear Raven snoring anymore. This time, I see the wardrobe move, the door specifically. I stare, wide-eyed. Everything, everything falls still again, but I don't dare move. Jenna? I whisper loudly. It wouldn't make any sense why she'd be there, but who else would it be? Ghosts, of course. I'll take a step forward towards the stairs, maybe, or at least wake Raven up, but that's when the small door cracks open. I freeze all the furrowed body standing up. J James? Words die on my tongue, something long and black slides out from behind the door. It dips down towards the ground, and only then does it vague only then does it vaguely take the shape of a foot. Another long, black tendril follows, slightly ahead of the first one. When it touches the ground, it takes the ship of a hand, resting flat on the wooden floor. I choke and start to try and back away, but then... The door explodes open, and I'm barely able to make out a galloping black shape before it engulfs me. I collapse back into the ground, twisting, trying to scream, but the thing is completely covering and smothering me. I choke and gag, feel like I'm being suffocated, my arms pinned to my sides, my legs rigid. I try to yank away from the thing, it feels like something is free from my mouth, and I'm able to scream. Help! Get her off me! Help! Chase! The surface underneath becomes soft, the thing on top of me, warm. Two bleary eyes, I look up at Carl, just able to make out the curve of his horns. Carl? I hear a movement at the doorway, and I glance in that direction to find Jenna standing there, hackles raised, teeth bared. Jenna? Where I know what, I, what exactly was going on, Jenna sprints across the room and jumps on the bed. Carl doesn't even have time to turn around before she snatches him off the horns and yanks his head back violently. The ram lets out a choking sound as he's dragged back and thrown to the floor. Jenna jumps off the bed after him. From the sounds of it, she lands on him. It follows a series of thuds and smacks. Weakly, I pull myself to the foot of the bed, still completely disoriented. I knew it, you motherfucking piece of shit! What I see is Jenna Sierra and Carla's back, swinging her fists into his head while the ram tries to cover up. You hadn't changed at all! Jenna, stop! I roll off the bed, confused to why I'm so weak. Pain shoots up my leg, but does not barely notice it. There's something around Jenna, something big and black like a shadow, making her look much bigger than she actually is. Her fists swing and hit Carl with a force I didn't think she was capable of. Then she grabs Carl with horns again and yanks back before slamming his face back into the floor. Jenna! I lunge forward, trying to pull, put myself between the two of them. Un underneath me, Carl has gone limp. Just like Jenna, there's something black and shattered around him as well, but it's fading, moving away. Then it's still trying to get at Carl, reaching ar around me and snarling in my ear, a sound that makes my fur stand on end. Then she's gone. 
I look to my left and see Jenna being drawn back by Raven, his eyes wide with shock. What are you doing? In a struggle on the husky's grasp. I saw him. He was trying to fuck the otter. The otter? Jenna, stop. He was helping me. Raven continues to try and pull Jenna towards the door, but she continues to struggle. I was having a nightmare. Jenna's struggling, losing. Losing his vigor, but she is a snarl in Carl's direction. Raven, please get her out of here. The shadow around Jenna seems to shrink and her face shows some doubt as she stares at the crumpled floor with Carl. After a moment, she seems to let the husky lead her from the room and I hear soothing tones from Raven as he leads her down the stairs. I turn back to Carl, who has his arms around his head, face still buried in the ground. After a while, I see his shoulders heave with sobs. Gently, I pull him up with my arms back and he looks up at me. This time I recognize his face. I sit next to Carl on the bed, mopping up his face with his bloody button-up shirt. He sits there silently, looking at his hands while I work. At least nothing's broken. Dude, what happened? I'm not sure if he's talking about what happened with Jen or just everything. I've been asking the same questions we got here. He looks at his hands again. I felt... I felt different. I sit back and look him over, sad so having cleaned up most of his face. You were acting different too. Like I felt like I knew everything. I knew what I was doing. You were acting really confident. I agree and set his bloody shirt off to the side. When I look back on him, he seems so sad and beaten down that I have to hug him. Dude, you're gonna me start crying again. His voice cracks, but he hugs back anyway. I'm just glad you're back. I feel like I was talking to a stranger. Carl leans against me and sighs. I don't know if I'm glad, though. It's like I just came down from a huge high. I rub his shoulder for a while before I venture forward with my guess. Was it James? I... I don't know, maybe. Carl looks at his hands again. He's questioning if they're even his. I just felt like I knew what I wanted. And when things didn't go the way I thought they would, I'd get really pissed. I saw it for a while. I imagine contemplating what he'd just gone through. Jenna isn't really acting like herself either. Carl looks up at that. Yeah, I felt like whatever was in me, whatever it was, really hates Jenna. Really what hates what Jenna's doing for some reason. Carl looks around the room, scanning with his hot, dark green eyes. I feel like all this is some kind of mental fight between James and whatever else is fighting against him. He looks back down on his hands. That's why we have to do all of this. He falls back into silence and I don't ask any more questions. Why to let him rest a bit? There is one nagging thought that comes to my mind, though. This is kind of stupid, but what happened back in the mansion, you know, that thing between us? He looks up at me and I feel my face flushed, looking away. I guess I'm wondering if any of that was real. I mean, if it was really you feeling that way. Carl doesn't say anything, so I'm forced to look up at him. When I do, he's a sad sort of smile on his face. Dude, I think that was the only part of me that was real. Despite where we are, despite everything that's happening, that somehow makes me feel incredibly happy. Happy enough to lean forward and kiss him. He kisses back, and while it's barely more than a peck, it is my entire body feeling warm. He puts his arm around me after I pull back and rest my head on his shoulder. I feel like it's gonna try and come back though. I look at him. What, James? Whatever it is, I can already feel it, like it's on the edge of my mind. Do you think you can fight it? Carl sighs and looks at me. Should I? What do you mean? I mean, it made me feel amazing, like I could do anything. Maybe we need that. I frown. I don't know. Not only that, but I feel like I knew what to do. It might save us. She goes back to my eyes. I know it's not really me, but it'll probably only be for the time that we're here. I look away, thinking. Then I'll be back to my old self. He squeezes my shoulder. But it's important to me that you think what you think. We're in this together. Oh, for fuck's sake. Great. I can't even go back. Okay, I can. Right. I just had to click that button. You know what? I'm 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 just going to save it because I don't I don't trust my choices.
you're going to fucking fight it. That's what you're going to do. No, whether or not it made Carl feel good, I can't shake the bad feeling it gives me. I rest a hand on, on his. No, after everything that's happened, I don't trust whatever it is. Carl watches me closely. Seriously, we need to be more careful. Besides, I lean my head against his shoulder again. We are in this together. We don't need that thing meddling with us to get through it. I feel some of the tension go out of Carl's muscles and we wrap each other more tightly in our respective embraces. We sit there for a while, Carl absorbing what I just said. It's clear that whatever is influencing Carl and Jenna is probably more powerful and we had to be careful. Whatever he decides, I just pray it's the right decision. <sighs> Guys, I'm just gonna say it, we are like at least like two hours from the ending, I think. It's probably less, but it is a while. Till we get there. I wake up groggily, my head throbbing a bit from laying on the stiff pillow. Like the last time I woke up, it takes a while to realize where I am. Okay, so if you're not getting it right now, this is James Hendricks I and John Begay having a mental fight. Of course, you guys don't, if you haven't like seen this before, you guys don't know why they're having a fight, but like I do. And it's pretty fucked, and I'm not going to spoil it because, yeah. Part of the surprise, really. So, yeah. Like the last time I woke up, it takes me a while to realize where I am. And just like last time, I got a sinking feeling in my stomach where I realize where that is. Jeez, it's still fucking raining. It's been raining all day. I lay on my side, staring at the wall in front of me, watching shadows dance along the log bumps. It's depressing, though not as much as it was the last time. At some point, I guess I realized that there wasn't much I could do. Just go with it and hope something comes of it. At least there seemed to be a goal in the mind of whatever had control of this. Whatever it was. I suddenly feel an arm slide over my hip and I stiffen. Carl braids into the back of my neck. You okay? I feel the soft warmth of Carl's body press up against my back. It's been a long, long time since I felt someone spoon me. Thinking about Leo, that only makes my stomach knot up into more. Yeah. Carl picks up on it right away. His broad muzzle sneaks over to my neck, and soon he's pressing his cheek against mine. I can feel him hesitating as he does it. His movement's kind of jerky and awkward. I almost laugh, but I have to remind myself that Carl probably hasn't done this before. At least not since high school. Definitely not with a guy, at least. A hand slides over my side, close to my crotch. He doesn't go lower though, and keeps it pressed against my body. It feels nice having someone close to me like this. Even though I've given up on trying to understand the situation, I'm still scared of what's happening. I can feel Carl's heart beating hard against my back, and I wonder if he's thinking about the same things. That's what I feel is very hard. Okay. I almost laugh again. Here I am in a haunted ghost cabin and my childhood friend is grinding up on me. Carl fizz me tense up and lifts his hand away from my stomach. Sorry, is this nut? I roll over and, abru and abruptly to face him. His green eyes immediately roll look away from mine and I see a red creeping under the thin fur of his ear. I decide to go with the same technique I used last night and slide up against his soft body before pressing my lips against his. That seems to break the eyes and he immediately responds, pressing his tongue against my lips before he'll open them to let it in. Carl's surprisingly good at tongue kissing, better than Leo was anyway. <laughs> wow. It glides over my teeth before flicking against my teeth. I'm momentarily worried about how I haven't brushed for at least two days now, but Carl doesn't seem to mind. He hasn't either, after all. He wraps his hand around my back, sliding one near my body so he can wrap me in a full embrace. The feeling of being enveloped in Carl's soft and strong wound my heart so beat, and pretty soon I'm just as hard as Wow, Chase. Well, his hands toy with my tail, I get to work. Run my own hands under his shirt. Wow, okay. Carl tenses and giggles. Oh, fuck, that tickles. I pause and smirk at him. I barely touched you. He gives to make a light prod, and he curls up a bit more, grabbing my wrist. <laughs> Dude, I think I'm not just not used to being touched like. <laughs> I can't fucking do that. Not in that voice. Not that fun. Not in that voice. I apply both hands this time, running them like spires up his stomach and chest. Dude, no! 
He twists and rises under my hands, desperately trying to stifle his giggles when finally snatched at my hand by the wrists. I reminded of how strong he is when he easily rolls me to my back, struggling in my hips as he pins my hands above my head. You asshole! Carl is breathing heavily, a little giggle every now and then. Sorry, I've just never seen someone get so. I pause here to move from downstairs, but it sounds like Raven's voice. I remind of her situation when I see some flakes of blood around Carl's nose and the big splotches on his shirt. I, uh, guess we're being a little loud. Yeah, how's your nose? Carl automatically raises a hand to touch his nose. Nah, it hurts a little bit, but I'm okay. That's good. I lay there in silence for a few seconds, feeling like this moment is kind of ruined. I look at the walls, remembering what we should be lo that we should be looking for something instead of messing around like this. What you looking at? Not sure. Hey, we should be finding something, right? Hmm. My crotch is starting to be a little uncomfortable under the weight of Carl's body. I mean, didn't that ghost ancestor, whatever it was, tell me we needed to find stuff? Carl rubs his nose. Yeah, in the last place we were in, at least. I guess it would be the same for this place, right? Unless it was what we already burned up. Yeah. Carl sits there quietly, thinking. Well, I think I might try to look downstairs. You want to stay up here and look around? Yeah. I want to get the other two to start looking, too. The threat of Jenna hangs heavy in the air, and the way we're both obviously avoiding it makes it all the heavier. But what about your ankle? I flex it around, the twinge a lot, a lot less sharp now, though the stiffness feels even worse. I think I'm okay. Let me try it out. Okay. Carl sits there for a while longer, then seems to realize that he needs to get off so I can get up. He scrambles off awkwardly as I sit up and swing my legs over the side of the bed. Pressing my foot to the floor, the twinge that runs to my ankle is minuscule. Standing up, I'm about to put some pressure on it before it hurts too much. The problem is that I can't bend the joint at all, leaving with an obvious and lumbering limp. I think I'm okay. Can I hit you down the stairs at least? I warn the concern in Carl's voice, though I don't really want him and Jen anywhere near each other. Especially after what she might have just heard. Nah, I want to test it out a bit more. I turn my head to look back at Carl and still see a worried look in his face. I'll call you if I need any help, okay? Carl purses his lips. Alright. The trip down the stairs is ponderous and awkward. I'm probably loud too because when I reach the bottom I find Raven and Jen already staring at me. Hey. Hey. She doesn't say anything or need to watch me. We stare at each other awkwardly for a bit, bit before she finally moves her head to look down on my leg. How's your leg? Oh, it's alright. A bit stiff, though. I grasp for the opportunity to talk about anything other than what we're obviously avoiding. I think I should be able to walk normally, maybe in a few days. Hopefully in a few days we'll be out of here so you can do that. Yeah. Then is definitely not herself right now. Her eyes are vacant, dull, and it's hard to explain, but they like, but they like the mischievous and compassionate look that I'm used to seeing. Her voice is weird, too. It's deeper, more husky. We'll be out of here by then, Raven says with, with a grin as he leans back in the chair he's sitting in. Yeah, actually, I want to talk to you guys about that. About what? About how to get out of here. And how do we do that? Well, we I was thinking that the last time when we were able to unlock the door, all we had to do was find that letter. Raven blinks at me. So we find the letter? Or something like that. We just need to find something, I think. We did find I I don't know what fucking voice to give. Uh John, I get I don't know what voice to give John. <laughs> we did find something. I look over at Jenna. Huh? I said we did find something. Carl burned it. Oh, well, I don't think Carl burned it. He did. I pause. But there's got to be something else, or maybe whatever's doing this way of putting something else here. The others don't say anything. I don't know, but we can't just sit here. Looking around is the least we can do. Where is Carl? Jenna's standing up now, looking at the ceiling. Faintly, I can hear the clopping of Carl's hooves on the soft wood. He's looking around upstairs, but we can choose to look up at the ceiling or face stony. Let's start in this room. 
Raven stands up and starts walking along the wall, looking up and down the logs, prying at the space between. Jenna is still looking up at the ceiling, and worried that she's going to try and go upstairs. Hey Jenna, can we look around the kitchen? Jenna looks back at me. Urgh. My ankle still kind of hurts. It'd be nice to have someone to lean on if I need to walk far, like the kitchen. Jenna paws my moving over to my side. She stands there stoically, and I awkwardly wrap an arm around her shoulders. Thanks. Yeah. I don't fucking know what voice to get. Like, because she's obviously not herself. And, like, fuck, man. We end with only the kitchen. Jenna stops in the middle of the room and waits. I guess I'll start with the cabinets. My voice goes up at the end like I'm asking the question. Jenna doesn't say anything, so I stumble away from her again, awkward before finding support in the wooden pantry. I hesitantly start opening some of the cupboards, feeling a lot less than the idea than I was just a few minutes earlier. Jenna stares out the window. So, are you okay? She finally looks back at me, frowning. I'm fine, why? You're being really distant. Do you, do you need me to stand next to you? No, I mean, you seem like you're not really here mentally. I'm sorry. Open up their pantry door to set a clap. A set of glass mugs. Is it something to do with Carl? I know that Jenna's going through something similar to what Carl is. I just have no idea what's going on, what's doing it, or why. Something that wants this to go as smoothly as possible, clearly. I don't have a problem with Carl. I mean, what you did yesterday. I just have a problem with the way he acts. He could do a lot if he put his mind to it. Just me once you realize that he's talking about what happened before, all of this. So, you attacked him? Th no, that was something else. I turn around and finally see something familiar about Jenna. Some life in her eyes. Maybe all I have to do is talk about stuff before this whole warped ghost dimension. I mean, he tried, he just has problems. Some shouldn't a psychology major know that? Then he looks away from me. I guess, but I'm not a therapist. So what? So I don't know. No, I mean, shouldn't anyone have sympathy? I'd have a little more sympathy if he actually- if he would actually try and get help. He has, but it's not that easy. Again, I don't feel like I should be explaining to someone, to someone who has four years psychology under their belt. Exactly! She's a fucking cunt! I tried to get help, but it didn't feel better for years. Jenna doesn't say anything. Carl's problems didn't really start until his first year of college. I keep pulling open covers and heart right sinking a little more each other's nothing inside. I mean, yeah, he had problems before, but it's only getting worse for him. Well, it doesn't matter what I think about Carl right now. We're trying to find out what out our way out of here and screwing around isn't going to help. In a sense of a way that I feel like it was supposed to be pointed. There's little doubt now that you're just messing around upstairs. I sigh and reach up to pull open the last cabinet. He's not who you think he is. So quiet and deep, I'm not sure it's Jenna that said it. I turn around, which is already on the other side of the room, sitting next to the opposite side of pantries. Did you say something? She doesn't respond, so. I stare at her for another few seconds, but we slowly turn back around. The fur in the back of my neck prickles with the turn, turn back on her. It. Why do these damn ghosts have to be so subtle and cryptic? If that's what it is, of course. Seemed like James had no trouble telling Carl what the whole clue finding crap. Why couldn't they just tell him, or even Jenna right now, to just creep me out? The kitchen is very big, so I ran out of things to search through pretty quickly. I skipped the air around the window, though, not having forgotten what happened yesterday. Yesterday? I don't know how to keep track of time in this place. I look back over at Jenna, who's still in the same place, staring at the pantry. I thought that maybe I, might, maybe I myself could possess to momentarily pass through my mind. For some reason, I doubt it, even though I'm not sure why. I don't really feel like I'm of interest whatever it is that's doing this. At least not directly. As I continue to stare, I see something past Jenna at the base of the stairs. A ram's horn curling out from around the corner to the entrance of the stairs. I stare for a moment. Hey, I'm gonna go upstairs. Jenna's head snaps back sharply to stare at me, and I swear I hear her neck crack. Just to see if we found anything, I'll be back. I awkwardly summon way out from the kitchen towards the stairs, Jenna's gaze following me the entire way. Once I reach the base of the stairs, I find Carl standing there. 
He jumps when I come around the corner and stands straight up, one hand resting against the wall. His eyes are red and the short fur in his face so mussed up. Carl, are you okay? I whisper, but Carl immediately turns around and starts back up the stairs quietly. I follow him, wondering what it could be. Do you find some horrific? I wouldn't be surprised at all if that were the case. Once we reach the top of the stairs, Carl heads straight for the bedroom. Carl, what happened? Did you find something? At that moment, he turns around and hugs me. It's so enveloping and firm that the air is almost crushed out of me. I grunt and freeze for a moment, listening to Carl huffing into my chest. He's holding me like I'm something precious. Like if he lets go, I'm going to be swept away somehow. I'm quiet for a few seconds, letting Carl get whatever this is out of the system. My arms are pinned down to my sides anyway, so it's not like we respond physically. Hey, are you okay? It's a dumb question because none of us are okay. Carl finally lets go. He turns away from me right away to sit in the bed and put his face in his hands. My shirt is damp and I look down to see two wet spots where his eyes had been. Tenderly, I sit down next to him at the foot of the bed and put my hands on his back. And on his back. Hey, what happened? Carl sniffs loudly up in his eyes before putting his face back down on his hands. I just... The ram sighed before finally straightening up to lean back on his hands, looking away from me. I just feel like shit is all. Can I help? I just had a moment. Couldn't breathe. He broke his back, knowing there isn't really anything I can do. Panic attack? How come? Lots of things. Carl shivers under my touch. And uh, I feel like everyone's mad at me. Why? No one's mad at you. Well, Jenna, first of all, but I feel like everyone thinks this is my fault or something. Why would any of this be your fault? He was probably right about Jenna, though. It's my house, my great great, whatever it is. It's all it's all just my shit. He sniffs. I don't know, just being alone gets me thinking about this stuff, about how I'm still fucking everything up. Dude, Jenna told us. Fucked up things are happening everywhere, not just your house. I look around. Which I'm assuming we're still in, maybe. I look big down at Carl. What brought all of what brought all this up? We're just working together to get ourselves out of here. Carl wipes his face and sniffles noisily before sitting up straight. I wasn't finding anything. I started to think about what would happen if we'd never do find anything. That's not gonna happen. These things that are doing this are trying to tell us something, right? I don't know about that, man. They seem just as confused and angry as we are. Carl looks at me with his reddened eyes. It's like they're fighting, too. Yeah, I guess I'm in some issues. Carl reaches out and I let him pull me into his side. I don't resist and Carl chuckles. And it's just creepy being up here alone. I feel like I almost perfectly, annoying my head against his shoulder. Sorry. For what? I, uh... I feel like I should be the strong one. Huh? You already seen me cry, like, twice. Hey, I don't believe in the strong one type of crap. I understand in Carl's thigh, squeezing it. You're strong for the other person when they need it, and both people will need it eventually. Carl shifts against me and laughs nervously. You're talking about us like we're a thing. Aren't we a thing? Look what we're doing right now. I don't know, man. It's hard to say when you're stuck in a haunted cabin. Film person nose in my head, inhaling. This place is doing weird things to me. I squeeze his thigh again. Yeah, we can talk about when we actually get out of here, when this stuff isn't fucking with our heads. So, we are a thing, but just in the ghost dimension. <laughs> sure, for now. Fine with that, for now. He breathes in deeply. You smell good. I snort. What do I smell like? Like the ocean. Dude, I'm a river otter. Besides, and the river and ocean smell bad. Carl nibbles into the side of my neck and I gasp, trying to pull away from him. He pulls me back easily with his superior strength before pushing me back onto the bed, teasing at my neck with his warm nose. Carl, stop! I guess I'm trying to burst out laughing. He moves against my neck. Hey, I'm just getting you back for earlier. I giggle helplessly behind a closed mouth, trying to keep quiet. I can't deny I like this, but Jenna's criticism just minutes earlier made me feel hesitant. 
He starts to move lower, but at that moment I hear a metal clang and come up the stairs. Both paws and Carl's large ears are perked up under his beanie. I prop myself up on my elbows and look towards the doorway. Um, I guess we should get back to searching. Yeah. With the moment clearly over, Carl sits back up on the side of the bed while I straighten up my shirt. You found something? Raven's voice just faintly up the stairs. Carl and I look at each other. Hey, maybe you won't need to. You want to go check? Yeah, we're here a sec. Uh, if it's nothing, I'll come back up and have you look around, all right? Okay. Carl scoots to the side so we can get off the bed. It takes me a few minutes to get down the stairs on my stiff ankle. Once I get to the kitchen, I'm confronted with an odd scene. Jenna's halfway into the wood-burning stove, reaching to the back, probably up into the metal tube. What are you doing? She found something. Raven standing off to the side of the stove, bouncing on the balls of his feet. It's stuck. Jenna grunts as she just herself, reaching it from a different angle. What is it? I hobble slowly across the room towards them. You need help? I realize it's something to me, but I shake my head at the husky as I watch Jenna pull back and look through the opening of the stove. Goddamn things shouldn't be that hard to get. Maybe I can help? Jenna's already unplugged plunging her hand back in, head sticking just out the open as she does. That seems to garner some success as she smirks. Ha! Got it! Then her whole body jerks to seemingly yanked into the opening. Raven yelps as Jenna grabs onto the side of the stove to keep from being pulled in. Oh my gosh! Jenna? My voice rises in panic as so I get yanked a second time. Raven automatically steps up next to him and grabs her arm. A third yank almost pulls him off his feet. I run over to help and wrap my arms around Jenna's waist to get a better grip. Another jolt and I'm able to feel the power of her as I held on Jenna myself. What's happening? I hear a thudding and rustling in the stove like something's turning over angrily and repeatedly. The image of some kind of caged animal passes through my mind and it starts to chill up my spine. No, you fucking don't. I look up at the fog and I notice that she doesn't look scared at all. Instead, she looks pissed off, her lips drawn back in a snarl, teeth bared viciously. She's telling whatever, whatever's in the stove. I feel the muscles in her body tensed up and writhing under my hand as she twists to get free. I look around her body at Raven, his face in contrast to a mask of horror. Raven! His wide eyes stamp to mine. Get a grip around her body, we'll pull at the same time! He briefly lets go of Jenna's arm to lean down on her other side and wrap his arms around her waist. Okay, on three. One, two. Another yank and suddenly Jenna's upper half is pulled into the stove. I use my balance and fall back on my butt, knocking my head against the metal stove. My eyes water and I let go with one hand, desperately rubbing the back of my head while I loosely hit the grip on Jenna with the other. Chase! Raven's actually sliding at the fireplace himself at this point. I try to get my bearings and pull myself back. Back up next to Jenna, but at that point something big and bulky comes barreling into the room. My vision clears as I'm to see the big ram reaching for Jenna's body, practically pushing Raven aside. His horns cling loudly against the stove as he wraps his arms around Jenna's body and pulls back with all two, with all his 270 pounds behind it. The fox emerges slowly, both of her arms still stuck in the stove, a determined look on her face. Carl lets go for half a second, lunging forward to grab both of Jenna's elbows. He yanks back again, letting go, letting out a strained grunt. As the wrists emerge from the stove, I get a glimpse of a black tendrils wrapped around them before those tendrils suddenly disappear. Carl and Jenna are both launched back, trying to get, in, get into cushion land on top of the ram as Carl is at a loud wheeze. I hobble over to them, kneeling next to Carl as Jenna rolls off him. I listen to another grunt. She sits up while Carl continues to lay there, his eyes wide. You guys okay? Carl waves a hand at me, rolling over on his, onto his side as he gasps breathlessly. Jenna sits next to him, holding her hands up. I can already see nasty swelling under the fur, covering her wrists. I wince. Jenna, are you alright? I'm fine. She's not looking at her wrists, though. Instead, she's had, she's, it's had an ash-smudged folded piece, folded piece of paper in her hands. From the bits that aren't covered, I can see that the paper is yellow and ancient-looking. Not at all like the clearly photocopied newspaper we'd seen earlier. Jenna looks down at it, standing up. I hear a groan next to me and turn back to Carl. Can't go a day without getting beat up. I rub his shoulder as I look down at him, smiling. Wow, that was kind of heroic. Carl grunts as he sits up. You think so? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll the last second, too. Carl rubs his knees. Would have gotten here earlier if I hadn't tripped down the stairs like twice. He stares at the stove. What the hell was that? I look, too, into the yawning black hole and shiver. I don't know, it was all black and smoke like we saw before. Think it'll come out of there? Raven suddenly steps in to lift the stove door, twisting the handles to lock it. He yelps as he does it, jump back as soon as the deed is done. I chuckle, then look back at Carl. Over his shoulder, Jenna walks my field of vision. The paper is open in her hands as she's holding over the candle. All at once, I realize what she's trying to do. I chuck whatever I'm about to say next and leap up awkwardly under my injured ankle. Jenna! Luckily, Jenna's only about five feet away, and I practically fall onto her, pushing her away from the candle. We both fall against the bench under the window. Then his hand smacks against my nose, bringing tears to my eyes. I yelp as she pulls her fingers in, raking lines of fire down my nose with her claws. There's a pounding in my ears, and I distantly register that the drums have started up again. She twists out from under me and pulls away, away from the bench. When the fuck did you get this strong? I numbly keep my grip on her wrist, and she spins, swinging me away from her. I lose my grip and stumble back, stepping wrong on my foot and rebending my ankle the exact same way I did last time. I yelp again, much more loudly this time as I crumple to the ground. Carl swears and jumps over me at Jenna. Wait! I try to grab his hand by the hoof that's passing over me, but I miss miserably. As I sit up, I hear an ungodly bestial snarling, and I look up to see Carl wrestling, kicking and scratching Jenna to the ground. That is fucking it! He pins her there while she rises under him, trying to scratch at his face. Stop it, guys! Raven is still standing off to the side, his paws on his head, pulling at his ears. I crawl over their writhing bodies, one eye wincing shut, as each movement sends a lightning bolt through my leg. I grab at Jenna's hands, forcing them down above her head. Jenna, stop! Jenna suddenly kicks one of her legs up between Carl's legs as he kneels over her. Fuck! She crumples over on top of Jenna, lying on her legs. She tries to pin his thighs together. I look down at Jenna's face. Stop! What the hell are you doing? Jenna snarls up at me, but it's softer this time. Her struggles die down a little, and after holding my gaze for about ten seconds, she looks away. I relax my grip a bit, gasping as I try to rearrange my foot so there's not so much pressure on my ankle. I... don't know... I pull the piece of paper out of her limp fingers and push away from her, waiting to see if she'll come after me again. She doesn't, so just lying there with her hands above her head, staring at the ceiling. Raven. Raven, still with his fingers twisted around his ears, looks over at me. Yeah? Take Jen upstairs, take a nap or something. I think we... I think we need to be kept separate for, a while for now. As Raven hurries over to Jenna, Carl rolls off with a groan. Raven's easily able to coax Jenna up off the floor and they head upstairs. Jenna looking down at the floor all the while. I scoot over to Carl, hold him a breath as he drags into their spasm on her leg. He's on his side, hands behind his le between his legs as he squints at the wall. Once he's noticed, once he notices me, he looks at my ankle. Fuck, are you okay, man? Um, no, I don't think so. I stepped in the wrong again. God damn, what the fuck is our problem? It's okay, you're just gonna have to carry me again. Carl chuckles. Throw out another softer groan. What did I say about getting beat up all the time? Are you okay? No, she kicked me in the fucking balls. I sit quietly for a moment, the pain in my ankle fading to a more cold electric sting rather than molten lava. The hell is going on? Why did she try to burn it? Carl's quiet for a moment and looks up at me again. You know, right? What? I could be wrong because nothing makes sense here. What? You know, this probably has something to do with James and John. I heard the back of my head again, feeling a bump swelling up already. Didn't we already figure that's what's going on? I mean, with Jenny, you know what James was so sort of talking to me? Yeah, like he told you what to find. Yeah, but I think something is talking to Jenna, too. John? Maybe. To make you guys fight, weren't they lovers? Would there be a reason for John wanting this paper not to be read? Carl didn't say anything, choosing to roll into his back and lay his hands out to either side of him. I looked down at the paper in my hand. Well, should I read this now or wait for the others? Might as well do it now, she might try something again. Alright, I'm gonna read it out loud then. 
Carl raised a hand in the air, indicating that I should go ahead. I scoot back against the wall so that I can stretch my leg out and start reading. My dearest John, I've been hearing terrible things lately. They say that you've been accusing me of the most egregious monstrosities. I dare you, I dare not believe them. In fact, I will not hear, I will not until I hear your words for myself. There must be some misunderstanding. Has one of my many political enemies pitted you against me? Are they using the missing native boys as a weapon against my campaign? I would not think that to be below them, but what concerns me most is you. Please, visit me at my, at my mansion and speak on this. I very much look forward to your company and believe that we can soon set this straight. Where is forever, James? I look up at Carl. He looks back at me. So, what do you think that means? Carl rubs inconspicuously at his crotch. I guess something wrong with James and John. Well, yeah, but what? It sounds like he's trying to frame them or something. I remember the newspaper clipping that had someone gone up in flames. Hey, that newspaper article that burned up said something about a Meseda kid that went missing. So native kids were going missing and John used to go to James somehow? Maybe we still don't know how John was doing it anyway. James didn't seem to know either. I wonder if we'd been able We've been better off if Carl had, had a little bit of James in him right now. At least then we'd have a better idea of what is going on, maybe. Then again, the situation is so volatile with Jenna, I'm kind of glad that we don't have another ghost deal with Carl. I look at the man who's in the middle of pulling his wristband, waistband out to look at his junk. If James is still influencing Carl somehow, then he really isn't showing it. You okay? Carl bullets go, the waistband let and snap back to his waist. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Are your, uh, balls okay? Carl smiles ruefully. They look fine. Still kind of hurt. I think I'm making a joke about me. It can feel better, but that doesn't really feel appropriate right now. I'm actually more worried about Jenna, not just because she can beat me up. Yeah. Seems that at this point, Jenna isn't really Jenna anymore. Should we talk to her about, I don't know, resisting it? It's work for me. I look in the direction of the door a loud click and it emanates from it. Carl's long ears perk and he follows my gaze. We both stare at it for a few seconds. Do you think? Maybe? Slowly Carl gets to his feet, still a little bow-legged, and hobbles up towards the door. Careful. I say, a little apprehensive that something might have opened it from their side. Carl doesn't say anything and slowly shuffles towards the door, pausing in front of it for a few seconds. Slowly, he reaches out and rests a hand on the handle, then gives it a slight push. It shifts open a few inches. Carl looks back at me. Um, I think we should get the others. We all stand around the door, Carl to my right and Raven to my left. Raven and I making sure there's a maximum distance between Jenna and Carl. The door is still shifted open a few inches, and the vertical black void reveals a little ominous. So we just... go through? I don't know, man. That's what we did last time, right? Yeah. I feel like the real question is if we really want to go through the door in the first place. Is it just going to lead to other terror place where terrible things happen? I feel a void similar to the one I'm, lo I'm looking at open up my chest. The thought of being trapped in the loop going through door after door that leads to nothing but horror. Already, this place is having an effect on Jenna that seems to be getting worse with each passing hour. How much longer can she keep it together? What did the letter say? I tense up. Anything she does now has been putting me on edge like I'm just waiting for her to lash out again. My aunt just conspiratorial in my pocket where the hold up letter is. I glance to my right at Carl, but he's got his eyes on the door. Mm, a few things, just more history stuff. About what? Side of that moment that I have to lie. We need to keep Jenna or John calm if we, if we want to get through this. I have a feeling that Jenna, John, wouldn't want to hear about James reveal what I assume are secrets. I didn't read anything about John trying to set up my research, but maybe that's what James is trying to tell us. So I shrug my shoulders, moving ahead away from my pocket. Still about the mine, how uh, there was enough of it to sustain the town. I'm worried that Jenna might challenge my life, whatever reason. She doesn't say anything, though, and Carl just keeps on staring straight ahead. Raven suddenly claps his hands together, making Carl and I jump. So, should we open it? Raven reaches out. 
Wait. Asuki pauses and looks back at me expectantly, his black gears tipped forward. Do we... Should we do this? I mean, it's probably just going to lead to another place where we have to find another thing. Yeah. Jesus Christ, we're almost in two hours. Fucking hell. So... So maybe we shouldn't keep going? I stumble over my words trying to piece together my feelings and put them into sentences as they go. I just... I just think they're not really on our side, you know? I make an effort to look at Jenna. So if they're not, why are we doing what they want us to do? I realize I'm shaking now and I make an effort to make my hands still. That's when I feel something big and warm slide on my right hand, and I glance down to find Kara holding it. He gives me a quick look at a small swallow of her turning to his attention back to the door. What else should we do? Raven's tone is an accusatory, but it is generally curious. I don't have a very good answer. Well, maybe we can find a way back somehow? Maybe we're still in Carl's house right now. Carl's house. That place seems like it's thousands of miles and years away at this point. Maybe we can, like, wake ourselves up somehow. Raven doesn't respond, and neither does anyone else. I realize how stupid I must sound. Sorry, I just feel like... Like we're taking things too fast right now. Carl gives my hand another squeeze. Hey dude, we're all a little scared, we can talk about things. Carl looks past me at Raven and Jenna. No rush, I'm actually starting to feel the same way. My cheeks burn at the way I'm holding everyone else. I'm going back because I'm scared. So uh, when I had that guy in my head, I sort of like he was taking us somewhere. Carl runs the hand, not holding mine, up to one of his horns, scratching at it. Like an endpoint, you know? Raven fidgets with one of his ears. Like a good endpoint? Uh, yeah, man, I think so. Didn't seem very convincing. You can stay here if you... You can stay here if you want, Otter. It takes me a second to realize she's talking to me. It makes me... Is she, is, her, is she really that gone? I just hope that if we reach the end of this, we can get her back somehow. Whoa, Jenna, that's crazy. I coughed to clear my throat. No, I'll go. I just wanted to think about it for a second. Have you thought about it, then? Uh, yeah. I look at Carl, but he only offers me a shrug and a comforting rub on the shoulder. Well, if that's all, then let's go. Jenna steps forward to grab the door handle, and I bump my time to hear him saying we should wait again. The door swings open to reveal blackness, just like the last time. Unlike the last time, though, there's a spot of flickering light in the distance. The fire... Everything's quiet right now, no drumbeat, but the darkness is unnatural. It's inky and thick, like it's alive. I get the unnerving feeling that it's trying to eat the light from the fire. Maybe towards the fire? Then it suddenly steps forward, and just like that, she's swallowed by the darkness. Jenna, wait! She ignores me. Kara gives his shoulders another shrug. Well, if she is being a... Persuaded, I guess she probably knows where she's going. I see her fuller pass in front of the firelight a few times, and she's gone. Alright, here we go. Despite his nervousness, Raven still sounds cheerful at stepping into oblivion. Ready, dude? You go over a car, and he's gazing back at me horribly, an encouraging smile on his face. Dude, I'm right to my limits, too. We have to do another place like this. His ears droop, looking almost defeated. I nod, swallowing as quietly as I can. He pulls me into his side with my hand and wraps my arm around his shoulder. Just stay close, okay? Yeah. I step forward with him and immediately we're immersed in blackness. Not only do things go dark visually, but the change is physical, too. I don't know if it's all in my head, but I feel heavier, like the darkness is pushing down on my shoulders. It's colder, too, to where I can feel the heat rain off of Carl, Carl's body when I brush up against him. Doing okay, man? Yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Going is slow, and not just because of my injured, probably broken ankle. The ground is uneven and rocky like we're outside walking in the desert, which I realize is exactly what we're doing when we walk straight into what feels like sagebrush. 
Car all thrashed around with the hand not holding on to me. We're able to sort of stumble around it. Where the hell are we? I mutter as I stub my toe painfully in a rock. Outside? Yeah, but we're outside. The desert, right? So do you think that we're still in Echo? Carl's quiet for a moment. Maybe, but not really. I mean, I don't think we just walk to our houses. I wonder if maybe all the others, TJ, Leo, and Flynn are out here too in the darkness. I want to call out, but I'm too nervous that it's going to attract something to us. A storm with the black figure dancing around the fire, walking towards it this very moment. We're close enough now that I'm starting to be able to make out Carl in the darkness. I look back at the house to see how far we've gone. All that I can make out now are two rectangles of light. One for the door we came out of and one for the kitchen window. In the latter, a dark figure stands framed by the faint light inside. I squint, not really sure what I'm seeing. Then it moves, disappearing from the window. I stop walking and Carl stops with me, looking back over his shoulder. What? I don't... Did one of the others go back? The black figure appears again, this time in the doorway of the house. I don't have enough time to react to that before it steps forward and doors swing shut with a distant snap. Oppressive dark blackness takes its place. I grab into Carl more tightly. What the hell? My mind flashes back to the black thing I'd seen crawling out of the wardrobe. Come on! I nudge into Carl's side, trying to get him to hurry along while resisting the urge to run on my twisted ankle. I'm realizing that a light come to that. Raven! Jenna! I call out to them into the darkness ahead of us, wanting to warn them. Over our ragged breathing, now there's a dead silence all around us except for a drumbeat. Either they can't hear us or they can't respond. Carl's gripping onto me with both of his hands, practically hauling me off my feet as he pulls me along. Suddenly he stops. What the fuck am I doing? He lets me go and crou crouches down in front of me. On my back! I'm there before he even finishes his sentence and soon my face is bouncing off his hard scroll as he starts sprinting towards the fire. Whether it's in my head or not, I swear I can hear a slithering sound behind me like a snake sliding over dry leaves. I shiver, not wanting to look back, but I do anyway, trying to peer into the darkness. Of course, I can't see anything, but I swear something flashes in front of a lone rectangle of light coming from the cabin's kitchen window. The rustling sounds get louder, and now I can't pretend I'm imagining it. It casts a picture into my mind. That black shadow creature contorting and bending through the sagebrush that Carl was having so much trouble moving through. I hold onto one of his horns and leans, lean toward his ear. Carl's getting close, and then my stomach glurches. It feels like the floor just suddenly drops away. Next thing I know, my mouth smacks hard in the back of Carl's head before I flip over, landing on my back and feels like a sea of sharp rocks. I lay there for a second, dazed, staring at the black ocean above me, wondering if any of this is real. Am I still dreaming? Maybe I'll just wake up in my dorm, probably late to my legal and ethical issues in journalism class. Fuck, are you okay? A muffled voice perks in my haze of confusion and pain. Then I'm being yanked back up as Carl pulls me to my feet and clumsily shoves me back onto his back. Sorry, shit, sorry. I'm fine. I can barely mumble through my numb mouth, which feels like it's full of pennies. I can see I'm making dark stains on the back of Carl's shirt. I feel that my face is caved in. I wonder if my nose is broken, but the fear of the pursuit is returning. I quickly clutch at Carl's horns before he resumes his sprint. He finally comes to a stumbling hole in front of the massive bonfire, which had looked so small from the cabin. We both stare up at it, the heat almost unbearable. Um. The whispers behind me reach a crescendo, the hissing just over my shoulder. Um. What are we supposed to do? My voice raises in pitches as I look back behind us, the black shape now discernible in the firelight that slithers around the rocks and sagebrush. It's like a person imitating a snake. I grip onto Carl as he turns to face it, then takes a step back, then another. I... I don't know. I cling to the ram, and I can feel him trembling underneath me. As the creature reaches the edge of the circle of firelight, Carl turns and starts running past the fire. And then my muscles seize out, my jaw clenches, my eyes roll back, and I feel myself falling backwards. He is almost unbearable, and my fur is damp from sweat, the skin underneath itching and uncomfortable. I can feel the sun on my face, this brightness turning inside my eyelids a dazzling red. I don't want to open them though, no. I just want to sleep. I almost do fall asleep, but a distant chorus of shouts and screams jolts me back awake. 
Now I do turn up my eyes, but I can't. It's like they're glued shut. I reach up to paw at them, my arms won't lift. I must be dreaming, stuck in a paralysis. So I lay there, listening to the shouting and screaming, imagining an angry mob. After what seems like hours, the voices fade in the dark. Red turns deeper, darker, blood-like, as if the sun is setting. And that's when I can finally drift away, back to sleep. A soft, choking moan brings me back to the surface. I'm still hot and sweaty, but the blazing sun doesn't shine on my face anymore. I wiggle my fingers and shift my arms a bit, feeling them glide over fabric. It's not paralyzed anymore. Another moan followed by a coughing sound before it opened my eyes, realizing it's not part of a dream. Back here, huh? Right, of course. I stir up at the ceiling, a textured beige ceiling. I'm back in the room where I'd slept how long ago? A day? A few days? It doesn't matter because everything comes back to me at once. I feel like a lead weight has just dropped into my chest, knocking the wind out of me. Fuck, is this not over? Now I'm starting to become convinced that this is never going to end. We're stuck in a loop, just like in my dreams. Another moan, slightly weaker, makes me sit up and look around the room. I'm alone as far as I can tell. Where are the others? Am I actually alone? I can't stop a soft whimper from my mouth at the thought of being separate from the others. I was barely keeping together with Carl, but without him... A loud cough at the wall behind me makes me jump again. I quickly slide off the bed and immediately cringe as my weight comes to rest on my swollen ankle. I sag against the bed for a moment, squinting, as my eyes shut. Squinting my eyes shut as I wonder while my ankles are only getting stiffer. Maybe the fall of Carl's egg made it, made it even worse. The thought of those moans could be coming from Carl spurs me to straighten up and carefully hop towards the door. I have to stifle a short yelp with every bounce, and by the time I reach the door frame, I have to lean against it to catch my breath. My hands shake as they roll my eyes, the pain making me wonder if I'll be able to walk without a limp again. Another groan from the room next to me forced me to move again. In the hallway, now I'm able to make out the sounds a bit better and realize it has a feminine quality to it. Jenna? My voice comes out in a crack, and we squeak, and I grunt to clear my throat. Jenna! I try again and wait, but I have to get, but I get no response in return. I force myself to step into the hallway, clinging to the wall for support. When I look down the hall to the door next to mine, I see I find something very familiar. A damaged wooden door, the middle bulging and splintered out as if something had hit it from the other side. Memories of a bad smell, a dark concrete room, and a noose. I hold tighter to the door frame, feeling my knees tremble, both from the pain and the fear. I look behind me, hoping to see Carl, maybe even Raven. A muffled sound, shuffling sound, followed by another cough and gurgle, draws my eyes back to the door. It's if Jenna, if it's Jenna, I have to act now. I steady myself against the wall as I hop slowly to the door, eyes watering with the pain now. Reaching out with a shaking hand, I start to slowly push at the door. That way, then I might be able to crack it open just a bit, little bit, and then and not draw off the attention of whatever is inside. The door only shifts a little, though, and seems to catch in the ground underneath. It lets out a rough scratching sound that makes my fur rise up. Gritting my teeth, I forgo the stealthy approach and give it a hard shove. This time it opens halfway and able to see into the room. Just like last time, there's no light coming from within the room itself. Instead, I have to rely on the dim yellow light coming from the hallway. It casts a widening band of light into the concrete room as the door opens. The smell hits me like a wave and I immediately gag, doubling over and pressing a hand on my nose before pulling up the neck of my shirt over my nose. Sure, I smell like B.O. from the two days of running in fear, but it's better than the sweet smell of rotting meat that's enveloping me. Still shaking, I peer into the room while I lean against the door, but I'm only able to see the cracked concrete floor and walls. The grunting, choking sounds reach a peak now, it's come from beyond the band of light. It's an inky blackness that isn't all that different from what Carl and I had run through. Hello? No response. It sounds like the grunting has stopped too. Shit, I have to do something now. <sighs> this really does dry your throat. Just saying. Almost the two hour mark, which is fucking crazy. I think about kicking the door open and jumping back, but then I remember there's, not, there's really nothing I can do with my feet right now. Taking a deep breath, I set both hands against the door. I steal myself whatever I'm about to see, then shove the door as hard as I can. 
The door swings in suddenly, scraping horribly against the floor the entire way. I yelp at the suddenness of it, the tension all exploding out of me at once as I jump back in fear. The band of light widens, seeping, sweeping over the entirety of the concrete room before the door finally lodges against the wall with a snapping sound. I almost lose my balance, arms swinging around cartoonishly as I try to hop on one foot. At the same time, I'm fearfully eyeing the opening, terrified of what I'm about to see. And what I do see is definitely terrifying. It's Jenna in the middle of the room. She's hanging from the noose, her muzzle tilted up, so I'm able to clearly see the rope digging into the fur around her neck, painfully tight. Oh, okay, so she's... living what John Begay went through now. Okay, oh god. <sighs> her toes are barely touching the floor, but it doesn't even look like she's trying to keep herself up. It looks like she's, looks like she's unconscious. Jenna! There's no response, and I find myself leaping in her direction. I forget about my ankle until about all until all my weight comes down at it twice, and my mad dash literally scream as it happens. There isn't any time to worry about it though, as I grab at Jenna, unsure of what to do. First, I tried to wrap my arms around her and lift her up, screaming again as I set my weight down on my foot. She doesn't respond to any of this and just hangs limp in my arms, which terrifies me even more. I reach up and pluck uselessly at the hang hangman's knot that I immediately know is going to a budge no matter how much I pull. Carl! Carl, help! I feel myself starting to panic. I just desperately look around, trying to find something, anything I'm able to use to cut out the rope. Jenna! I call up at her. I can't see her eyes from this angle, but I can f can't feel any movement in her. I try to press my ear against her chest, but I'm not sure if I'm doing it at the right, the right spot. I try to quiet my breathing and actually listen, but I still can't hear anything. Shit! Shit! Carl! I feel myself start to hyperventilate and try again to slow my breathing. If I pass out right now, I'm going to be, I'm going to be less health than I already am. The world is starting to take on a so surreal tint, and I actually think I'm dreaming. I think about running to the kitchen, but I don't want to let her go, especially since I feel like she's on the edge of dying right now. I reach up again and try to wear my finger underneath the rope, but it's useless. It's way too tight. My eyes start to water to realize I'm not helping her at all right now, aside from maybe taking a little pressure off her neck. But it might be too late anyway. Help! I'm suddenly hyper aware of the screaming pain in my ankle and I feel it giving out. So my arm is burning with the strain of trying to hold Jenna up. I press my face against her chest and I still start to give up on everything. And then suddenly the weight disappeared and I feel Jenna lift up several inches into the air. I look up and see Carl next to me, his big arms easily able to keep the fox off the ground. Not only that, but he's got a knife in one hand. I recognize it as the same knife Carl had used earlier in the hallway. Carl! I saw it with relief as he sets the sun at the rope and soon all three of us come crashing to the ground as Jenna is cut free. We lay there in a heaving heap. The only sounds are gas as we try to catch our breath, Jenna being the loudest. After a while, I sit up and look over at her. She's already sitting up herself, one hand to her neck, rubbing at it. Are you okay? I reach out to her. I'm fine. She leans away all over my hand so I drop it. I thought you were gonna die, Jenna. My voice is all shuddering and I struggle to keep my emotions under control to not have a panic attack. Whatever was controlling this whole scenario just tried to kill one of us. But then I guess it's already happened with the shadow creature thing, and even with what's happened to Raven. Jenna picks up the knife and brings it to her neck, starting to saw away at the rope. I can help. She ignores me. I look over at Carl and see that, she, that he's flat on his back, arms spread out. Thank you, Carl. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't showed up. Carl raises a hand in acknowledgement. How the hell did you get a knife? Carl takes a few more gas to clutch us to catch his breath. I, uh, I heard you guys and saw that. He gestures up at the hanging rope. The end of it fizzed out at the end after the cut. Remember that knife I dropped when we were here before? Thank God. Clay there a while longer. Jenna busy, busy hacking at the rope. Carl just to stare up at the ceiling. That almost peaceful silence. It shatters a husky stumbles into the door frame, clutching onto. As he practically trips in. Whoa, hey guys! He grins, living in hand at us as he writes himself. He looks around at us, taking in the scene. What happened? Jenna got hanged. Carl cut her down. There's really no way to sugarcoat it. Oh crap! He stares wide out at Jenna. 
Well, I guess it's surprising it wasn't me this time. <laughs> he lets out a high-pitched, nervous laugh. None of us even cracks a smile. You're okay, though. Fine. Raven looks around the room. Well, it looks like we're still here. Carl lets out a big, shuddery breath. I don't know if I can do this anymore. What do you mean? We're stuck. I don't know what else we're supposed to do. Just keep looking around. We're finding stuff, right? And then what? Get stuck into another fucked up place where we'll be chased around and almost killed. He leaves a hand in his direction. Look what just happened. It wants us dead. Carl. Trill off. What? I try to think of something to say anything that might convince the Ram to keep going. Just a while ago, minutes, hours, days, I was having the same doubts. But for some reason, Carl suddenly made our defeat as me more motivated. Because if Carl gives up, what else is there to keep me going? Just a soft sap and I look over to see that just pulled the rope from her throat. How's your neck? Dinner rubs it. Fine. Her voice is an air of complete disinterest despite the situation. She seems distracted to her eyes flicking around at the ceiling she's expecting something to happen up there. I look up too but all I see is concrete and it's cracked spider web with cracks. The rope I notice is hanging from nothing. It sort of just grows out of the ceiling. Carl lets out another sign next to me. I wish I had a join. I feel a small flicker of annoyance. And how will that help anything? Carl's quiet for a moment, clearly sensing the change in my mood. I may regret it, but I don't have the energy to take it back. Because it might make me feel a little better. By making you feel less, we need to be alert right now so we can figure this out. I bring my tone back down to normal rows and how unfair it would be if I get mad at Carl right now. I don't know if we can, though. Carl's lips tug down on a frown, and it looks like he's trying to keep himself from crying. Before I can say anything to comfort him, Jenna speaks up. You will. Her voice is dark, firm, and completely unlike the way Jen has ever spoken before. We both look at her and she sits there, legs crossed, staring hard at us. Well, at me. Carl sits up. Jenna! Jenna doesn't look at him, instead she keeps looking at me. John! Now she does look at Carl and it's, and it's out of instinct, her eyes darting to him before looking back at me. I recognize it as that, almost, as, that, as that almost unstoppable urge to look at the way you hear her name being called. Yeah, we'd suspected, but Jenna had been acting weird. But to think that she was that consumed by him. Carl glances at me, me, at me meaningfully. We hadn't asked her directly about it yet, so I guess now's the time. Hey, Jenna, are you feeling okay? I'm feeling fine. It's just that you haven't seemed like yourself for a while now. What do you mean? I look over at Carl as he shifts himself around on the floor. Listen, when we first got here, and even a little before then, I was feeling weird. Carl pauses. He used to be searching for the right words. Sort of like something else had to become a part of me. Then the narrows her eyes at Carl, but he doesn't, but doesn't say anything. There is another voice in my head, almost... And after a while, I knew it was that guy, James, in my head. Sounds like you're going crazy. Carl frowns. Maybe it made me act different, feel different. And it was kind of fucked up, to be honest. Weird. Yeah, weird, but it was easy to get it out of my head. Carl points at his horns. And now he's not there anymore. Then it keeps that stern look in her face, frowning at Carl. What are you trying to say? Well, do you know a guy named John? John Begay? Not really, you keep mentioning it, but no one's told me who he is, aside from the fact that he was hanged. I remember the picture I'd taken of John back in Carl's crawl space. My hand fills my phone through my pocket as I was reach in. It's played out before remembering that it's dead. He was in some pictures with James Hendricks, the founder of the town. Then he stares at me blankly. James was Carl's ancestor, right? We think that John was your ancestor, too. He was a fox and has the same last name. So? So wasn't your family an echo since the beginning? Yes. So it seems like you're probably related to him, right? Jenna stares hard at me, then at Carl. Our family doesn't have an F records like yours, Carl. Carl frowns again. You say like it's my fault. Maybe it is. Carl starts to sputter again, but I cut him before he can defend himself. 
See, Jenna, don't, don't, Jenna doesn't talk like that. You wouldn't say something like that. Jenna doesn't say anything keeping up her glare at Carl. Carl clears his throat nervously. What I'm trying to say is that maybe your answers are in your head like mine was. I don't think so. Carl sort of frustrated sigh. I mean, something's different with you, dude. I can see it. Chase sees it. A nod in confirmation. Raven suddenly cuts in. I mean, I don't know you that well, but if we're going by how a normal person acts, you're not acting very normal. We're not in a normal situation like that, are we? Carl shakes his head. I know you can resist it like I did, Jenny. You've, ar you've always had a, a strong mind. It's way stronger than mine. Carl swallows. So it shouldn't be a problem for you to stop it like I did. Then a shrugs. Nothing's wrong with me, Carl. We all go quiet then. Besides, isn't this about clearing Jenny's name or whatever? Why are we talking about John? And just stares at Carl, eyes moving across his face because she's searching for something. Carl stares hard right back at her. Unless you don't want to fight it. Jenna's expression remains motionless. I mean, are you letting him? I don't know, Carl. Are you letting him control you? No, I already told you I fought him out. How do we know that's true? Carl throws his hands up. Dude, why would I lie? Carl looks at me for some help. Yeah, Carl's way different than he was earlier. He's himself now. But how do you know that? I don't know what else to say to Jenna to convince her. Of course I can't be completely sure. The only person that can know is Carl. He says he isn't possessed anymore, and I trust him on that. Jenna, he isn't. What? But Jenna, he isn't, I promise. You think James kept his promises? Carl and I share a look. Jenna, what do you mean by that? A strange look crosses Jenna's face, breaking out of the stoked attachment she's been betraying for the last several, however long it's been. It's confused, but it's also like she wants to say something with her mouth open. Jenna? She seems to be frozen like that for a moment where she seems to finally give up, shaking her head. I don't know. She glares at Carl. He blanches defensively. What? You keep acting like this is my fault! Maybe it is. This time Raven cuts him before Carl can say anything. Is James stopping John from saying something? I watch Jenna closely, and that's when she finally looks away. I don't know. Jenna, are James and John upset with one another? Jenna shrugs, not looking at me. Carl looks out a sigh of frustration. Jenna, we need to figure this out. Listen, I don't know much about these guys, but it sounds like James and John are trying to tell us something. Raven looks back and forth between Carl and Jenna. And trying to stop the other one from telling us something. I rub my face with my hands, feeling frustrated, just wishing these two assholes could tell us what it is they want to say. So they're trying to tell us something about the, uh, about the past, and they both don't want us to know what the other one knows? Maybe that's what we're supposed to figure out? So it's not as simple as clearing James's name. John has something to say, too, and he sure as hell wants us to hear it. I close my eyes. We're stuck in the middle of a possessed ghost fight, with each of them trying to tell us their version of a story. The whole thing seems ridiculous, insane, but I really don't have anything else to go off of. Did you find anything out about them in the crawl space? I try to think back. Like I've said, they both got convicted of sodomy. John was hanged, and James left to start his ice cream business. So why wasn't James hanged too? His influence in the town, probably. I can see how it might cause problems to the two of them. I look over at Carl, who's still looking at Jenna. Jenna's picking at the rope in her lap. Hey, did James tell you anything while you were under his influence? Like, did he say anything? Carl rubs his chin. No, not really. It's weird. I just sort of felt different. I said things I wouldn't normally say, but I guess I never heard any voices. There isn't much more to talk about at this point. Unless one of the spirits decides to do something else that could help us along somehow. So, 
What are we supposed to do next exactly? Raven points at the back of the room. There's a door there. We all look in the direction he's pointing. Sure enough, there is a door there. It's a concrete. It's a concrete door practically cut out of the wall. It's featureless aside from a rusty metal handle. What? Was that there before? I think I would have seen it the first time I looked in. Finna stands up, taking a few steps towards the door. What, so we're just gonna go through another door? Carl is laying back down on the floor on his back, staring up at the ceiling again. I can understand where he's coming from. Another door to possibly another nightmare. But his sudden reluctance is making it easy for me to find the strength to keep going. I reach out, rushing a hand on his. Carl, this might be the last one. It might be the way out. Carl snorts. Seriously, dude, you think they're just going to let it go? We've accomplished nothing. Sorry. I remember just eating uh, candy. We can leave you here if you prefer. I glare at Jenna, but she's not even looking at me, instead of staring at the concrete door. Carl, we have to keep moving. If we go through another door, at least we're going somewhere. Yeah, besides, the past stuff has only happened to me and Jenna, so you guys probably have nothing to worry about. We can't stay here forever. I gently stroke the back of Carl's furry hand. He laughs again. Maybe we could just keep pulling grilled cheese sandwiches out of the cupboard. Carl props himself up on his elbows. Who knows, maybe I can get get some weed out of there. Carl looks back into the hallway, apparently seriously considering that. Come on, man, we're go all going in together. I reach back my hands to him expectantly since I can't get up my own. Yeah. Carl stares at them contemplatively for a moment, then finally gets to his feet while pulling me onto his back with a loud grunt. All right, man, but if this freaky, spooky ghost dimension goes on for another fucking door, I'm going to pull a joint from the magic cupboard. Of course. Jen's already standing in front of the door. Man, I don't want to pass out again. We just did that. We look back towards the hallway. You know, maybe we should check out the rest. Jenna reaches forward to grab up the metal handle, and before any of us can say anything more, she yanks it open. The trail leads to the desert landscape and cacti, and boulders obscure my view on either side. The ground is rocky, and dust kicks up with each step I take. As I continue up the path, I see the three peaks of Casa, of the Casa Demonio Mountains in front of me. I am headed, heading towards the town of Echo, just over these mountains. As I get closer, I notice that the trail branches off towards the side of the mountain. I follow the trail with my eyes into the hazy distance, almost disappearing into the heat waves. Uh, my thing's at like 41%. Jesus Christ. Still, I can make out a small dark hole. The mine. Something should just be left alone. Does swirl silently in the mouth of the mine almost sparkling in the bright noon light. Every single person here. Something seems to pulse out of the entrance, sending an almost visible wave through the air. You will never escape. You will always come back. Red seeps from the hole, running up the side of the mountain in a wave, turning rock and dust the color of blood. You will always be running in circles. I start jogging up the trail, panting the desert heat, not sure what I'm doing. The sky in front of me lights up that same ominous red color in the direction of Echo. Somehow, I'm able to scale the side of the mountain in just seconds. I get to the peak and look over the edge. I see the town, but it's not the town to remember, at least not all of it. Lake Emma is in the distance to the left. The new town and supermarket are to the right. But the ruins by the lake aren't just old foundation remnants anymore. 
They're fully standing at what their log walls and roofs. Several dozen more houses run up the side of the lake, standing in stark contrast to the modern buildings further away, toward Main Street. There are even a few buildings that I don't recognize. And there, just below me, is Carl's house. But it's different. The mansion is bigger, the walls a lighter color, it looks older. Somehow I'm already there, like I just teleported straight down to stand in the road in front of Carl's house. I stare down the slope towards the town and there, next to the wood road, is a wooden platform built under a tree. There's a rope hanging from the tree, a noose. I look back down at the town, at all of the different buildings. But no matter which structure I'm looking at, one thing's the same. They're all lit up blood red. Okay, so that little thing there. Yeah, that was... Yeah. Yeah, that's very, uh... Yeah. The source of, like, the blood stuff coming from the mine. The source of the hysteria. The mine, the murder in the mine. I watch what looks like spinning blades come slowly into focus above me. I tense up, but only for a moment as I realize what it is. A ceiling fan. Wait. A ceiling fan? Isn't that... I stood up quickly. Only to immediately swoon as the room starts to spin around me. I grip onto whatever I'm sitting on and it happens to be soft and smooth. I look down and see I'm top of a blue comforter. That's not blue, that's white. To my left, Jenna, Raven, and Carl stretched out next to me on a king-sized bed. To my right, sunshine streams into a sl sliding glass doors, outside of which is a massive deck. Past that porch are the mountains and desert of Echo. Back. Oh my god, we're back! Guys! Guys! I shake Carl next to me. He immediately swings a hand to slap me, but I persistently is forced to sit out, rubbing the seat from his eyes. Jenna and Raven stir next to him. What is it? What happened? Guys, we're back! We're in your house, Carl! Carl finally snaps his eyes open at that. Raven sits up next to Carl, and I see him sway with the same dizziness that I had earlier. Where are we? My parents' room. Carl's voice is hushed as if afraid. If he speaks too loudly, this will all disappear. A relief like I've never known before floods, flows through my body. Whether or not it was a dream or hallucination or a drug somehow, it doesn't matter. What matters now is that we're home. Well, in Echo, at least. I look over at Jenna, hoping to see her back to her old, old familiar self. But I find her staring around suspiciously, that dark look still in her eyes. Maybe that would take a longer... Take longer to wear off? I slowly push myself off the bed, the height of it making it more difficult for my feet to reach the ground. I touch down with my good foot, and I'm a bit surprised my toes come in contact with a cold, hardwood floor. I thought this room had carpet the last time I was in here. I look back at Carl and see a confused look in his face, the fur on his brow crinkling up in the bright sunshine. Something's a little off, man. What? Something's wrong. Which really begins with that sinking sensation in my chest again. Why? Sorry, my parents' room isn't this big. I look around. I guess it looks a bit bigger than usual. The balcony seems to be the right size, though. And the floor. He points at my feet. Where's the carpet? Carl confirms my suspicions. The dread continues to grow in my stomach. Maybe they took the carpet out while we were gone? No one responds to that ridiculous idea. Then I look to the wall behind the bed and reaches out a hand to touch it tentatively. Carl said aloud, almost a naïcal laugh. 
It's like I'm in a weird dream in my house or something. Carl puts pushes himself off the bed, his, clo his hooves clopping loudly, unnervingly against the hardwood floor that shouldn't exist. Fuck. Yeah, fuck. See the same emotions I feel in my chest playing out in Carl's eyes right now. He reaches out to give me some support. Well, maybe there are other people here. Even Raven's cheerful tone is forced and strained. I guess I was expecting that we'd end up in another dream world or whatever. But the fact that I'd thought for just a moment that we were back in the real world made this all the more soul-crushing. Feels like the fucking ghosts are toying with us at this point. Take a deep breath, willing myself not to lose it. Not yet, at least. Shit, so I'm gonna move to the deck. I get a better grip on the Carl size he starts to move toward the glass doors, his hoofs clopping while I hop along. He stares out, slowly reaching up with a hand to tuck at the handle. To my surprise, it opens. I guess I thought that it would be the same as the last place we were in, that it, we'd be locked in or something. I follow Carl as he steps onto the balcony, taking slow, careful steps as if he's afraid the deck may give out. The air is hot and heavy, almost humid. That isn't normal at all in Echo. You know, at this point, my, my fucking battery on this thing is so low, it's kind of ridiculous. Sure, it would get really hot, but it's a desert. Humidity is near non-existent. We reach the railing and stare out at the town below the foothills that Carl's mansion sits on. I take in a soft breath, just licking the drink in my head. The ruins of Echo aren't ruins anymore. Dozens of old-fashioned wooden buildings dot the edge of the lake. A little ways away, I see the familiar buildings of the motel and supermarket, along with the small neighbor to my childhood. And along Main Street, I see a few buildings I don't recognize. Not quite as old-fashioned as the buildings along the lake, but still pretty old-looking. What the hell? Carl almost winds out the words of the seam, gripped tightly into the railing. I move closer to his side, put an arm around his shoulders. Come on, man, we're going to figure this out. This is just... I struggle to find out what this just is, but I come up short. Listen, I saw this in a dream, and I think... They were trying to tell me something. What dream? A dream I had before I woke up. I, I have them almost every time we pass out. Why are you the only one having these dreams? I jump as Jenna speaks right behind me. I turn around, finding her eyeing me suspiciously. I don't know. None of you have dreams? I did. Raven pops his head from around the glass door, still with that bizarrely resilient grin on his face. But it was about the black shadow creature thing chasing me around through the kitchen, so I... I guess it's not really useful. What did you see in your dream, Chase? Well, this. I wave my hand out at the alternate reality town. But then the mine, too, like red stuff spread out of it, over the town. Then I saw a noose. I instinctively look over the edge of the balcony, down toward where I remember seeing the tree. Carl looks, too. What is it? Well, I... I saw a tree with a noose on it. Carl looks slowly back up at me. Down there? I think so. The look of utter defeat in Carl's face has me hesitating to confirm it. What the fuck? I take a deep breath trying to put what I feel into words. That dream, the way it zeroed in on a tree, felt meaningful. I think we need to go to it. Jesus, why? Carl buries his face in his hands as he leans against the railing, shaking his head slowly from side to side. I don't know, but I don't know where else to start. This place is massive. So what, they put another la letter there for us to find for some reason? Maybe. Uh, guys? Carl keeps his head in his hands as they turn around. Raven is still standing by the glass door, but he's looking back into the room. Jenna left. What? Sure enough, Jenna's nowhere to be seen. Where did she go? Raven shrugs. Downstairs, I guess. Is she going to the tree? I start to move back into the house and remember my destroyed ankle. I look back and see that Carl still slumped against the railing. Carl? He doesn't look up. Carl, we need to keep moving. Finally, the ram pulls his head out of his arms. 
and turns to help me. He gets me into a familiar position with me, clinging to his neck while I hop along. I'm relieved he's actually moving, but I don't like the dull look in his eyes one bit. Raven, Carl, and I head down the hall towards the stairs. Carl's right. It's like a dream of Carl's house. Carl mentioned that there were a few extra doors, all of which led into bare hardwood, hardwood floor rooms. The ground level of the house, though, looks mostly normal. As we make our way through Carl's sort of home, I realize something. You guys hear the train when you're on the deck? Maybe why? I thought I did, just... Kind of weird, like, what are these trains doing where that isn't really real? Maybe it is real? Maybe. I'm not convinced. As we pass through the living room, I can see that it's set up like it always is, and the kitchen looks to be in order as well. As we step outside, I notice that the mansion looks the same for the most part. Not the massive old look it had in my dream. I hop along down the curving driveway from Carl's house like I remember in my dream. How Jenna would be able to find the tree on her own is beyond me. The only indication I'd given her as to where it was was a glance over the railing of the deck. Man, it's so fucking close to being real, this place. Yeah. I don't know much else to add, but he's right. It feels so close to being home, but none of it is home. I slow my pace right... They turn right at the end of Carl's drive, are practically tugging the ram along. Jesus Christ, it's at fucking 35%. I'm gonna have to stop this video and, like, upload it as it is, and then, like, the fucking next one's gonna be really short. I slow my pace as I turn right at the end of Carl's driveway, practically tugging the ram along. We move the short distance down the road, then move to the edge of the left side of the road. I look down and over the side onto the rocky, sagebrush-covered slope. And there's Jenna. Somehow she immediately found it on her own. An old and rickety wooden platform sits under the tree. This tree and platform definitely aren't in a real echo. There were a few scant mentions of a hanging tree in my research. If it was still standing, I'd have to go get some film for my project. That project seems like something I was working on years ago at this point. I carefully start to climb down the slope, clinging to Carl. About to call out to Jenna when I stop cold. As he moved to the side, the thick trunk of the tree shifted, shifted in my field of view and revealed the noose. I let my dream the noose isn't empty. Hanging from the noose is a body. From where I'm standing, I can't see exactly what it is. Its back is to us, and all I can make out is a head, hands, and feet, and some old-fashioned clothes. Overalls and a cotton shirt of some kind. The clothes look worn and old like they've been sitting out in the elements for years. I stop moving, instead staring at the body. Carl freezes too and I can feel his ragged breathing in my ear. Jesus! Carl gasps. I stiffly feels the entire minute before I find my voice. Jenna? She's also facing the body, but I can't see her face. But she holds up a hand towards me to quiet me before slowly pacing around the platform. Looks like she's moving towards the front, so I steal myself and slowly follow her. I don't want to look at the body as I move, so I, but I can't tear my eyes away. It's old. Very old. The fur is mostly gone, the skin or meat black and leathery. The face is drooping and sunken, the eyelids closed. It's been out in the sun for a very long time. I don't know how much about corpses, so I don't know how long. I just know it looks like it's been a very long time. From what I can tell, it's a canine of some sort. Fox? John? For some reason, I look towards Jenna to see if she'll let us know who it is. She doesn't, instead just staring at the body. Carl tightens his grip around my shoulders. I'm not sure if it's for support against the uneven ground or the horror in front of us. Riven is just not to follow as he stands back behind the platform, looking away from the body. I swallow hard, trying to keep my nerves under control, trying to look at the situation like it's a simple task. Do you guys see anything, a note or something? I try to search the platform and avoid looking up at the body. There's something in its mouth. Carl points up at the cause of the shaky finger. He's right. There's a flash of white in the mouth of the corpse just barely sticking out from what looks like gnarled teeth. Piece of paper, maybe? I'm surprised how successful I am at keeping my voice calm. 
I sort of feel a little numb to all this by now. But I think we both realize at the same time what that means. That we're actually going to have to get that piece of paper. Fuck, man. Why do we have to do this? Why don't they just tell us what they want us to know? I cling to Carl as much as he's clinging to me, trying to keep him calm. Listen, I'll get it. It's just a body. No, it's not. Nothing's just as in this in this fucked up place. Jenna suddenly turns on the two of us, causing us both to flinch back from her. Chase, you need to get it. What? Why? You can't even fucking walk. I can crawl. He had the dream. They want him to be the one to get it. He volunteered anyway. That doesn't make sense. It makes perfect sense. Why the hell don't you get it? Carl has adjusted himself that he's standing halfway in front of him protectively. Because that's what they want. That's bullshit. If you know something, Jenna, why you fucking tell us? Carl's snarling at Jenna now, which is all the more impressive because rams can't snarl. We can't be doing this right now. Here we are in this fucked up dimension in front of a mummified corpse arguing. I put my hand against Carl's chest. Listen, I'll get it. This is what they want, and this will help us move forward. I tried to think about actually going up the wooden steps to stand in front of that corpse, but I don't really have any other options right now. Carl doesn't loosen his hold on me. Fuck no, Jenna, you get it since you seem to know what the fuck is going on. Carl squeezes me tighter against his chest as he leans in to glare at Jenna. Jenna glares right back and I see her lips trembling as she appears to be holding back her own snarl. Stop it, Carl, let go, I'm gonna get the paper. No, Chase. Carl, nothing bad has happened when, I, when it comes to getting these stupid pieces of paper. I'll be fine. Carl looks down at me, his face edged with stern resoluteness. It's at least a nice change on the almost dead look I'd seen earlier. He stares at me hard for a good long while to the point where I almost blush until finally... Fine, but I'm coming up with you. I don't think... Shut up, Jenna. Each word seems to have to work hard to get itself out of Carl's muzzle. It's okay, let's, uh, go. I let Carl hold my hand so we both move toward the platform where we're on even ground. I know it's Raven standing off to the side, still facing away from us. I have to check on him later. The wood creaks softly under our feet as we make our way up the steps. I focus on my hopping foot, not wanting to look up at the body. Once we reach the top, though, I realize that I'm going to have to. Leaning heavily against Carl for support, I look up. The corpse's eyes are open now. Two yellow piercing eyes that are sunk deep in the skull stare back at me. You are disgusting. I'm disgusting. You're abhorrent, despicable, horrible. For telling truths. For telling your own truth. You don't know... For telling your own truth. You don't know my story, my truth. Your truth is a delusion. You cruel, filthy, subtle bitch. What do you want from me? I want justice. You and your people don't know the meaning of... You and your people don't know the meaning of the world. Just let it rest. Let me rest. And you leave me restless... Murderer! You may not have killed me physically, but you murder my life, you fucking... The otter hears us. So if he hears us, then it wants him to. Why does it? You think I know why they create these places? Let us do small things and take it away. It's a game. My life, my reputation is a game to it. <laughs> Again. Go on, why don't you tell him your truth? The otter works with you. I wouldn't help me if I could. But you can't, can you? You are but smoke. Good thing, too, you and your fucking lies. I will tell him this, Otter. Uh, I will tell him this. Otter, you are stuck here because you can't see the truth. And until you do, how will we know the truth if you only lie? You are disgusting. I'm nine or ten and I'm sitting retreating in the forest. I like the feeling you get when you've finished crying. 
the stuffed up nose and throwing my head along with the feeling of having just run 10 miles. Like I've just finished something really hard and now it's over. And then a creak in the branches above me. I look up and see the fox hanging from a rope. His dead eyes are on me. Oh my God, really? <laughs> we learned about that in TJ's route, remember? Why do you get your ass up here and dig it out yourself then? He's awake. Chase? A big hand is critical below my head as I stare at the horns, waving about around above my eyes. Between them hangs the fox. Hey, you okay? What happened? I don't know. There were eyes? I stare harder at the fox, but the eyes are closed. Yeah, me too, but you just sort of fell back. Sorry, I dropped you, and I think you hit your head. That would explain the headache. My head throbs at each heartbeat. Why didn't you grab the letter, Chase? Are you kidding me? I flinch at Carl's loud voice and the spit that flecks my face. He just passed out, and a thing... And that thing has something to do with it, like I said. Dig it out of the fucking mouth if you want to. Dig what out? I cram my head painfully to look at Jenna. She stands in the exact same spot, staring stoically. Raven has moved to stand next to her, but now his eyes are wide, staring at the fox. I turn my head back around toward the hanging fox, and that's when I see that the letter is gone. Where did it go? I push myself up, cringing as I once again forget about my ankle. Carl hurriedly fusses around me, helping me stand. I keep my eyes on the fox the entire time, but I don't see any signs of life. What happened? You fell. No, the fox. What happened to the letter? Um. He ate it. What? How? It, uh, it just sort of gobbled it up. Carl's free hand gestures at his mouth. God. I lean my forehead against the ram's cheek as I close my eyes. So are we not supposed to read it? Raven's voice is small and quiet, nothing like his usual self, even during the time we've spent here. No one says anything for a while. I clear my throat. I, I think I heard John and James while I was out. What? What did they say? I... I think John and James, they're influencing some of this, but there's something else controlling all of it? How? I don't know, but it's stopping them from telling us what they want to say, like it's a game for it. I feel Carl shake his head against my head. So what are we supposed to do? Just figure out the game, I guess? They'd said something about having to see the truth, but I'm not exactly sure what that is. But the fox just ate our clue. That might have been one of them, James or John, I don't know. Do we just find another one then? I don't say anything because that's when I see the hint of white sticking out of the fox's pocket. I point. What's that? What? That, sticking out of the chest pocket. Huh. Carl moves a little closer, pulling me along tentatively. Raven calls anxiously from, from behind us. What are you guys doing? Um... Carl's voice gets tighter and more nervous as he reaches out with a shaky hand. I keep my eyes focused on the pocket, not wanting to look into those eyes of the open again. Carl touches the chest, shaking back his hand once before slowly going in again. His face turns towards mine, cringing as he tries to look and not look at the same time. He fumbles at the pocket for a moment, the fox swaying just slightly from the ram's poking fingers. Finally, after what seems like several eternities, Carl manages to get the grip on the note. Once he does, he yanks his hand back, almost hitting the fox's muzzles. He slides the letter free from the pocket. Okay, okay, let's go. Carl gently but quickly guides me down to the stairs. Then the eyes was in Carl's hand suspiciously. What's that? Uh, another letter or something. Where'd you get that? The fox ate it earlier. I saw it sticking out of the pocket. I guess there was another one. Jenna goes quiet and her expression darkens. About to ask her what's wrong, but Carl already already is unfolding the paper, swinging the hand, holding it to try and make it unfold. I all mount my own free hand and hold the letter between us. I notice at the bottom of the paper is a rough tear, tear like someone had torn it in half. Jen and Raymond moving close, close opposite us. 
Please, please let this be the one that gets us back. It doesn't look like a letter. In fact, it looks like a newspaper clipping. Well, a photocopy one anyway. Carl, I think this came from your mom's collection of artifacts. I remember some pages ripped out of the scrapbooks. Really? Yeah, I thought it was you taking them. <laughs> nope. I wonder how long ago this nightmare actually started. Seems that it had been setting itself up for days before it fell before we fell into this place. Well, guess I'll give it a read. Hopefully this is the one. I start with the big, bold title. Echo Researcher Uncovers Town's Serial Killer Past. Most might know Trisha Hendricks as the CEO of Hen's Ice Cream, but Echo Locals will know where to be an avid history buff as well. I just love how it connects all of us, how it shows us that everything has happened for a reason. But even she didn't realize what her research would uncover. According to Hendricks, the town's founder, James, had an affair with another man, and both may have been hiding a dark secret. You never know what you'll find out, but to think that James had a homosexual relationship, and with an alleged serial killer, well, it's really something. According to Hendricks's research, James may have been in a romantic relation with a native fox by the name of John Begay. Town records indicate that Begay was accused of committing multiple child murders. Hendricks says the crimes were sexual in nature. I reach the bottom of the page where the rough tear begins. Clearly there's more of the article, but... Jenna! I look up just in time to see a flash of steel before Carl jumps back, pulling me along with him. Then I have friends within inches of Carl's face before piercing near the newspaper clipping we're holding with a smack. What the hell? Jenna! I'm about to ask what she's doing because I think she's attacking the newspaper for some reason. But her intentions become clear as she moves, moves towards us with a knife, eyes set in Carl. Jenna, stop! Or even bounces up and down, his hands pulling at his ears. Carl moves back as fast as he can, as he can while I limp along. Jenna, what are you doing? Jenna lunges at us, the knife arcing down from above, from above again. This time she's too close, and Carl pushes me to the side as he jumps back. I go down on my butt on the, I go down on my butt on the rocky ground. Putrid lying beast, where's my letter? I, I, I don't know, what did I do? Carl's stuttering, stumbling eyes, wide with terror. I don't even know if he's going to defend himself from Jenna, and Jenna gets to him. With a muffled scream, I push myself on my feet and hobble after them. Each step, it's an electric glance, a pain to the back of my brain. I don't have time to dwell on it, though, because that's when Jenna reaches Carl. She grabs one of his horns and yanks him close, Carl swinging his fist wildly in her direction. It's a valiant effort, but Carl's not a fighter, and aside from there on a few grunts, Jenna isn't affected. She raises the knife just as I reach them. No, stop! Fuck! Um... I need to pull it away from Carl. I reach out, grabbing the fox by the back of her shirt and yanking as hard as I can. Jenna falls back and unexpectedly turns into me as she does. A deep penetry. Oh! Okay, no, no. Not doing that. Yeah, um, we're not doing that. I, I guess... Which one did I do? Grab her foot. Push. Carl, watch out! I yell as loud as I can before giving the fox the hardest shove I can give. I do it in angles so she didn't directly hit Carl. Carl leaps to the side as I slam into her, sending Jenna forward to face plant into the rocks and dirt. I reach out to Carl just as Raven goes blurring past me. He leaps onto Jenna, pinning her down. Go, just go! I'll figure something out later, but you need to get away, Carl! Raven's snarling as he, as he tries to keep Jenna pinned so that it doesn't match his cheerful face at all. Carl stumbles to his feet and turns and starts jogging away. Carl, wait, help me up! Carl seems to hesitate before finally turning around and leaning over to help pick me up. And with that, we limp away toward the road. I think we're heading towards the mansion again, but Carl turns us toward the road of the town instead. The growls and snarls get fainter and fainter behind us, and I start to worry what's going to happen to Raven. Hopefully, Jenna just stops since Carl's out of sight. He seems to be the only thing she's interested in right now. Guys, we're getting. This fucking battery is at 
28%. I'm gonna need to find a stopping place. Carl's pre Carl breathes raggedly in my ear over the sound of his st stumbling clops my dragon shuffles. Carl, you wanna go back to your house instead? Carl doesn't respond, and I look over to see him, see him looking straight ahead, eyes fixed on nothing. Carl? He gives his head a little shake, so I go back to stare at my own feet. My ankle's numb at this point, which I guess is better than the flancing pain I had earlier. We're further down the road now to the point where I can't hear Jenner Raven anymore. Going this way might have been a good idea since Jenner will probably end up going back to the mansion. Does she just need time to cool down? Where are we supposed to go now? I'm starting to realize that with what just, with what just happened is going to affect everything. How are we going to get near each other now? Then just tried to kill Carl, Jenna, or John. I feel a sudden burst of anger towards him. A fucking serial killer possessing her, forcing her to do this shit. Carl's breathing is getting more ragged. I look over at him again and see, and I'm not really surprised to see tracks of tears down his face. Carl, do you need to sit down a second, take a rest? A few seconds later, Carl stops abruptly next to a small boulder. I allow myself to be sat down on it. And Carl doesn't sit down. Carl, the ram doesn't sit down with me though. Instead, he starts pacing back and forth in front of me, occasionally wiping his face with his arm. Carl, Carl, sit down. I don't know what to do, Chase. Neither do I. Just sit down for a second, Will. No, I don't know if we'll ever get out of here. Carl sobs and goes into a coughing fit. No, no, come on, we're doing good. We're at least getting somewhere. Where? This go on forever, you don't know. I look up at the ram trying to think of something comforting to say. Chase, Chase, I can't do this. I need, I need a second. Carl turns and starts walking further down the road. Carl, Carl, wait, we shouldn't split up. Hang on. I stand unsteadily, leaning over to rest a hand on the rock as I watch Carl continue his trek down the road towards the town. Just wait, I, I need a moment. I'll be back. Carl! I feel myself start to panic as I stumble after him. I realize that not only am I afraid for Carl, but for what might happen if he runs off into this fake world, and I'm also afraid of being alone here without Carl. I hobble after him, but I re realize immediately that I'm not going to catch up. I watch him get further and further away down the middle of the road. A wheeze coaching my chest as I try to keep up, the sides of my vision starting to turn white. I'm not sure what it is, the panic, my breathlessness, or the world itself, but the whiteness seems to pulse with the faint sobs of the rim in front of me. Slowly, the light takes over, I'm in a fog. Okay, yeah, stopping point. Good, stopping point. Um, yeah. I hope you guys are, uh, enjoying this. I sure am. Um, yeah, this video is almost three hours long. Imagine that. Anyway, see you next time.